Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, we start off this meeting as we do all of our meetings, acknowledging that we're holding this meeting on the traditional territories of the Coast and Strait Salish peoples, specifically the Lekwungen speaking people, known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations, and that their connections to these lands continue to this day. I also want to just point out that these uh, meetings are streamed, live streamed, and recorded for, uh, for posterity for later retrieval off of the website. Uh, with that, uh, we'll get going here. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is a committee of the whole meeting, not a council meeting. Uh, as a committee meeting, we are not passing any legislation. Uh, we re merely recommend back to the legislative body at a future meeting uh, any things, uh, any aspects of change that we need to do. Uh, this is a bit more informal uh, than a traditional council meeting, and so we invite uh, people to, uh, from the audience to come and speak to uh, various issues that as they arise uh, coming before us. The first item on the agenda for us is our Parks, Rec, and Culture Commission minutes and uh, other information. And with that, uh, we have Mr. Holding uh, with us to, I think, to give a quick overview, or Mr. Herman, our Director of Parks, Recreation, and Culture. So welcome. Thank you. Uh, it was a relatively short meeting. Uh, the we had, Although we did have a fair uh, number of folks um, speak during public participation, more than uh, is normal for a commission meeting. We had five people. Uh, we had three people who spoke uh, with respect to the Sea Lore project. Um, the Arts Laureate and a member of the Public Art Committee, uh, I would categorize their comments as speaking to the process that had been undertaken and answering some questions that had been out in the community. Um, and also one person who had some concerns with the project. Uh, we had a uh, um, uh, person speak, you know, about the bird sanctuary and, and the need to um, be aware of it and also the idea of potentially limiting dog access to the south end of Willows Beach. And then we had another um, member of the gallery come and speak in support of the Uplands Park uh, Management Plan, also in support of the, uh, of the bird sanctuary and, and the idea of limiting dog access at the south end of Willows Beach. So. Uh, those five folks spoke. Uh, then we had a delegation, uh, Wiley Thomas, who is a gentleman who does a lot of uh, a lot of work for us, certainly through the HSP grant that we get at Uplands Park, and uh, and who has been contracted to um, produce uh, an Uplands Park management plan, and he gave a presentation uh, to the commission with respect to his work to complete that plan. Um, the plan will be coming forward uh, probably at the next commission meeting and, and through to council. Um, Mr. Thomas's um, presentation was quite well received and thorough and very interesting and and uh, did talk with uh, Councillor Braithwaite a little bit about the idea of potentially having him come to a council meeting or a committee of the whole meeting to to uh, give that same presentation if, that is, if there's interest in that. Um, then uh, correspondence, the Friends of Uplands Park, as they annually do, submitted their annual report for 2018. Uh, there was no one uh, there to speak to it, uh, so it was just received, but certainly it was once again noted the tremendous amount of volunteer work in general that goes into the park, but also the tremendous efforts of Margaret Litke to organize so many um, events and, and school groups and things like that. The, where such great work is done in the park. Uh, Jacques Sirois had also uh, provided a letter and some information on the migratory bird sanctuary, sanctuaries in the capital region and also brought forward uh, um, samples of new signage that will be going up uh, soon, hopefully this in the next little bit. Uh, then unfinished business, there was a uh, agenda item that had been requested by one member of the commission to discuss the public engagement and role of the commission with respect to the CELOR uh, project. Uh, as that commission member was unable to attend the meeting, that uh, agenda topic was deferred until the next meeting when, when he could be in attendance. And uh, finally, there was, uh, as happens every year, uh, in the early part of the year, there is a nomination period for uh, folks to be considered um, 
for induction into the Wall of Fame. And uh, as happened a couple of years ago, uh, council asked rather than there be a separate committee for uh, the adjudication of those nominations that a subcommittee of the commission undertake that work. So a uh, subcommittee of the commission was formed and, uh, and we'll be organizing a meeting shortly to deal with the nominations that we received. And uh, beyond that, it was uh, typical monthly reports that uh, the commission receives. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Are there uh, questions of uh, committee to Mr. Herman? And I should point out, while that process uh, was delegated, uh, we st it still actually is required from us to uh, to officially appoint a councillor to that group. Normally, it would be the Parks, Recs, and, and uh, Culture appointee, but if anybody else really wants it, and then by all means, raise your hand, and we can change that fact. Um, so are there any questions of Mr. Herman? Seeing none. Councilor Braithwaite. I just have a comment, if I may. Um, I'm really glad that you went into detail about um, uh, Mr. Thomas's uh, Uplands Park Management Plan because I think that it was really well received um, in the audience. There was a lot of people in the audience that didn't know the, the amount of work that goes into the park and the things that are in the park that need protecting. So um, kudos to him for being so thorough in his in his presentation um, and I, I'm hoping that he garnered some new volunteers for the park out of his presentation so um, and uh, yeah that was great so thank you yeah Councillor Patterson just uh, a positive comment um, about the the uh, report uh, the 2018 annual report on Friends of Uplands Park I just want to recognize the outstanding work by the Friends of Uplands Park particularly particularly Margaret Litke, um, for seeing all of the events that they run and all of the work they do. I mean, it really is impressive, and especially their success in attracting youth to the events. I, you know, that, that's really outstanding. It just demonstrates the power of grassroots movements to engage residents in the community, and, and Margaret is just a champion at it. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking, like, were you referring to pulling the grass out by the roots? Or were you actually, Councillor Braithwaite? Um, I, I would really like to recommend to Council that they have Mr. Thomas come and make the presentation to Council or to Committee of the Whole. Um, I think it's well worth it. I think there's so much in that park that needs to be protected, and um, it's it behooves us to start doing more now. Um, so I think raising the awareness around the council table for the new members that are here would be um, would be advantageous. So I would really like to hopefully have staff um, be able to have him come and present at a, at a future date. Uh, if it's the will of the committee, I think uh, we can look at that. But it's probably best to bring back to the next committee of the whole at the same time as part of the Parks, Rec, and Culture. Is that a reasonable time to do a short presentation? Mr. Jones, I'll look to you for a process. Uh, Your Worship, we could certainly uh, follow up with the Parks and Rec and Culture Commission and see if that would work. Okay. Uh, Councillor Patterson? Yes, uh, Mayor. I'm just wondering if you would like a motion to appoint Councillor Braithwaite to the Parks, Rec, and Culture Commission Wall of Fame? Yes, I need two motions that and then <laughs> a So is that a motion? Or is that a question? That's a motion. Okay, we have a motion, a seconded. Uh, any discussion on that? Call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, unopposed? One more thing for you to do? Your Worship, sorry yes. for... I, I wonder if uh, we might add something to that and say that in the future, because it has been our practice to always appoint the liaison um, and there would therefore be no need to bring that forward to council. So uh, if council were okay to add that, uh, and in the future, the uh, council liaison to the uh, the commission be appointed to uh, that committee. I'll make this a separate motion since there's sort of a piece. So if we can get a motion, if people are comfortable with that, we can have that motion made. I'll move that motion. Moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, not opposed. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, and we also need a motion to receive the- I'll move that. Oh, sorry, before we do that, we should also invite members of the public to come up and, and if they have any questions. And I also, if so please, if anybody wishes to come forward and speak to anything to do with the Parks, Recs, and Culture, uh, feel free to come forward at this time. All right, seeing none, we'll come back to this table. Uh, before we do a motion to receive, though, I just want to express uh, my appreciation as well to make sure it makes it onto the minutes for uh, Friends of Uplands Park and all the work that they do. I also want to just flag the uh, the team experience 
uh, piece that's, that was highlighted in this report uh, for um, kids on the autism spectrum, bringing them into the tennis camp. So that was a very interesting and innovative new program and apparently very well taken up. So uh, it's just nice to see those sort of innovative things being brought forward from the community, being incorporated and, and, and put into operations. It really reflects how responsive the Park Rex and Culture uh, department is to the community needs. So thank you so much for that. Uh, so yes, motion to uh, to receive. Move receipt. Second. Move and second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? Unopposed? Um, I'm just going to bring this up as a as a point of interest. I I personally found the uh, that idea of of separating the south part of the of the Willows Beach as a as a dog as a no dog zone, similar to what we've done with Kitty Islet and protection of the of the birds around Bowker Creek area. Um, I don't want to make a decision on that here today, but if, if it's of, of interest to people, I thought the presentation made at the council last time and here uh, was fairly compelling. If it's something that the council is interested in, it might be, it'd be appropriate for it to make a motion along the lines of just asking staff to come back with some information around that. Councillor Green. And thank you. Um, as I recall in the 20, I think it was the 2012 dog report that was done some years ago. I th believe there was a reference to the south end of Willows and that um, something about, um, you know, I think they were looking at possibly re restricting dogs from that end. So it is something that seems to have some support at least years ago. But Mr. Herman, through you, Mayor, you may want to just check that. I'm, I, I can't remember, but I do remember the report was quite extensive. Uh, Mr. Through the chair, I, I will go and review the, the report. It's sitting on the corner of my desk and I won't have to reach far. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, if not, then we'll just move on to the next items on the agenda if nobody's... I, I'm just wondering, do we want to wait for the report to come back or...? I, I think we should wait for the report to come back from staff. There there would be implications, both just time and cost and signage recommendations and, th and how practical that, that would be, I think, rather than moving it forward immediately. Uh, Mr. Jones, does that seem appropriate to you? Your Worship, I think that would be a good idea. One of the things staff has done, actually, has uh, prepared a draft uh, animal control bylaw, and so we would need to kind of match these things up. Um, so uh, we'll we'll put these two things together, and at some point uh, bring uh, that forward to council in the next number of months. Okay, thank you. So is that a motion? I haven't heard a motion. I'm not, if not, we can just move on. Okay. Yes, <laughs> Councillor Appleton. Sorry, th uh, Your Worship, are you looking for a motion to request of staff that they examine options for restricting dogs from the south end of Willows Beach? Is that and bring it back to a future for? council meeting. Yeah. Okay, well, then I, I would like to make the motion to request staff examine options for restricting dogs uh, and associated activities at the southern end of Willows Beach in line with the uh, uh, comments from the Parks, Rec, and Culture Commission. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Andy. All right, item number two. Uh, we have Upland Siting and Design Application 3395 Wheeled Road. Uh, this is an application that came before our committee a month ago. Uh, it was sent back at that time after a long discussion uh, for the applicant to work with staff on, on potential changes, and it's now back in front of us again. Um, Ms. Jensen, I believe, would you, are you doing the introduction? Please do. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you are correct. It was in front of Committee of the Whole in February of this year. Uh, the applicant is proposing a two-story single-family home to replace the existing one-story home that's on the site. So as per council direction, the applicant has gone away and looked at some modifications to the design of the proposed home. Uh, specifically looking at uh, the siting and the massing. So in, in um, response to the request, they've looked to soften the massing by reducing a portion of the roof that's facing Uplands Road, so that section has been lowered. They've changed the color palette of the building so that it's a softer uh, tone than what was previously on the building. They've uh, increased the fence setbacks on the Uplands Road so that the fence is now behind the front wall of the building. They've also looked to reduce the paved surface on the site. So that's been reduced from 23% to 19%. Uh, and that's been through reducing the driveway width and removing some of the front walkway. They did look at reorienting the home, but did determine that uh, that did not contribute to, to any kind of tree retention or improving the streetscape. 
Staff have also reviews, uh, reviewed the revised design. The proposed work substantially complies with the Uplands guidelines and OCP policy. Overall, the front yard area is increased. The residential park-like setting is maintained. The design draws on features presented from other nearby homes. The garage is oriented away from the street and no variances are required to the RS2 zoning. Staff are requesting council direction. All right, thank you. And uh, perhaps it's, I think, worthwhile to have the applicant come forward and just explain uh, in your own words a little bit about what's changed between the last, uh, last plan and this one, just uh, to give a little quick summary. And then we'll get to questions. Uh, just your name and uh, municipality, please. I'm Mark Whitney, I'm with Novus Properties and I live in Oak Bay. Welcome, Mr. Whitney. Uh, so s staff has given a good summary of what we accomplished in the redesign. Uh, we worked quite extensively on the upland side and found that lowering the stone, uh, the stone portion of that side uh, softened that roof line significantly. Also softening the, the stucco uh, color tone, making it a more natural to fit in with the natural setting, the park lake setting. We also enhanced the landscape around the home, uh, helping to soften the transition from the park lake setting to the home. Uh, we also moved back the fence line on the north side of the property to move it further from the street. We did spend quite a bit of time looking at resiting the home. We didn't feel that this improved the park lake setting or the uh, view corridors of the adjacent neighbors um, if you if you look at the siting of the home it is as far out of the two adjacent neighbors as it could be we also in, in increased the front yard setback by more than 16 feet which is almost doubling it from the existing home and we also removed the front walkway and re reduced the impermeable surface uh, to less than 20 percent. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there questions of counsel for the applicant this time? Councillor Zelka. Uh, thank you very much. Or, uh, or staff, I should say. I appreciate that because my questions are, are first for staff, if that's possible. Uh, so through you uh, to staff, uh, could you help me understand the advice that came from the advisory uh, design panel in terms of the, um, the two, um, uh, um, I guess, groups of, uh, of advice that they offered to the proponent. I understand that after the first meeting mm, a few months ago that they made some changes, but then at the second meeting there, was, uh, there were some, some further changes that were suggested by the advisory design panel. Could you help me understand uh, which of those um, bits of advice were accepted and which were not? Um, I'm still not quite clear um, in terms of the uh, av advice offered by that committee, uh, what is reflected on, the, on what we're seeing on these superseded uh, drawings. Please and thank you. Sure, and, and I'll probably give the applicant a chance to answer as well if he has anything to add after Ms. Jensen. Uh, Mr. Whitney can probably speak to it better than I can, um, but subsequent to the design panel meeting, they did uh, alter the lintel pattern uh, above the, the doors and windows to give it a stronger, um, a stronger sense. Uh, they did focus on the exposed below grade finish at the, at the base of the house. Uh, they utilized a concrete base with parging on the exposed foundation, matching the stucco. Uh, and they slightly widened the planting space on along the south property line, so they, they gave more soil volume for the for the hedging along that along that lot line. Okay, thank you. And then again, that was widened again, as I understand, in this application. So that was widened once before the last application, and again this time. Is that correct? Uh, this time, that south property line has not been widened so okay. much, but the driveway width has reduced. Okay. Mr. Whitney, is there anything else you wanted to add to that? Uh, I think Deborah has covered everything there. Okay, thank you. Councillor Zelka? Yes, thank you. Um, looking at the um, superseded drawings from the last meeting and the current drawings, uh, in particular for the driveway, uh, I don't see any difference, um, which uh, you, I understand that it was reduced, but I, I don't quite see where. If you could please point that out for me. 
Uh, I'll give that to Mr. Whitney, I think. Is, was the wide driveway width changed? Is that the entrance to the driveway was narrowed, and a large portion of the hard surface area that was removed was the walkway from the front door leading to the street. Okay. So th thank you very much. So this would be for the staff or the proponent. I see that from the front door, uh, coming straight out the front door and heading straight out to Wheeled Road, that portion of the pathway appears to have been removed. Correct. Um, so a question, um, uh, just in terms of the usage of the house, I imagine that anyone who buys this house is going to want to walk straight across that grass to get to Wheeled Road n uh, if they're not going to their car. Uh, if they're just simply going for a walk. I do anticipate that there will be a, a uh, grass uh, strip eventually filled in at some point across, uh, coming straight out, out, out from the front door. I'm just curious, just in terms of usability, uh, what was deleted certainly helps with the impermeability, but it, I'm not sure it helps with the um, saving of the grass. I, I, be I believe that's a, you can answer that. It's uh, it'd be really up to the owners of the house as they would is there any concern raised by the owners of the house on that design change? There was not. We, we took a look at, at the most common parking sites and, and felt that it was acceptable to remove the walkway. And okay. the last question about that, if I may, um, f to staff. Um, if uh, after this house is built, a year or two from now, the, um, uh, the owners or possibly future owners decide to put in a new pathway from the front door straight out to Weald, is this something they would have to come back to Oak Bay to ask for permission, or could they just put the, the pavers in and just, just, just go? Good question. Ms. Jensen. Yeah, constructing a, a new pathway would not necessarily have to come back in front of council as part of upland siting and design. They would have to ensure that they're still uh, meeting the 25% maximum paved surface. Thank you. And then last question, if I may. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, this time about uh, the, the actual roofing. Uh, when I look at the, uh, the plans from before and the plans now, uh, from above, looking straight down, uh, I, the only difference I see is that um, that's that um, uh, smallish portion, how is it, is about... Uh, I can't tell the exact size, has been dropped a couple of feet, um, bringing the line down on, is that the wheeled side road? Um, and, uh, and yes, it, it does uh, give an appearance uh, from standing uh, or, or imagining standing in front of the building of, of, a, of a slightly reduced massing, and I much appreciate uh, the design. It definitely dev does look better. Um, was there uh, any cons uh, um, questions related to... Um, uh, from the advice of the advisory design panel, because I know they did also question the massing, the general massing of the house. Um, I guess that we don't have the advice, uh, we don't have the, the advisory design panel in front of us, but we do have staff sort of representing them in some ways. Do we know whether this will satisfy the concerns that were raised by, by them? I, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to ask that, other than maybe sending it back to the advisory design panel for their opinion as to whether that qu general question around massing was addressed or not. Uh, I can put that to Ms. Jensen. I will point out that that question of massing was approved with the old design so this is a softening of the of the design last time so we had an approval from the design panel and a not approval from council last time so our committee so I yeah is there uh I'm not sure exactly the question is what is does that you use the term satisfactory which is a hard one for staff to answer so yeah it's really up to us at this point whether we find that satisfactory okay thank you any other questions of the applicant? No. Nope. All right. Is there anybody from the audience who wishes to speak to this this item on the agenda? We have a couple of people who wish to come forward. Come forward, please. So our routine here is you just uh, sit and uh, if you can just give your name and your municipality of residence. Oh, and you have to just hit the little button uh, microphone to turn it on. Oh. Hi, my name is Catherine Lupin, and I live on Beach Drive. And I don't have very much to say other than I would just like to support this, um, what I think is a very nice um, building. And I think that um, we should be very welcoming to um, people from Calgary and um, in, I'm very much in support of this building. Um, I personally am extremely happy with my own home that was built by Mark Whitney. I live on Beach Drive, and it's a very tasteful home, and I'm, I think this building is extremely tasteful. I've um, looked at it very carefully, and um, I'm with a lot of neighbors that have signed um, a form saying that we're all in support of this um, building and this structure, and I think that 
um, I, f I find it hard to believe that there's been so much fuss about this because I think it's a lovely building. I, I just wanted to put my two bits in. So that's what I have to say. That's why I'm here tonight. Thank you, Ms. Lupin. Thank you. I want to come to the same place over there. <laughs> John Armitage. Uh, I was the acting chair of the design panel um, the second time this application came forward. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions anybody may have, if there was any context that anybody would like fleshed out. Okay, Mr. Armitage, I, we, we can do that. Just the, the formal minutes form the official record, but I think if there's any subtle questions here, we can have that happen. You may, Councillor Zalka. Thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. And thank you for offering your, yourself uh, in terms of uh, providing the advice. Um, um, uh, the, the, um, uh, one of the concerns raised in the minutes uh, had to do with massing. I don't know if it's you, you or another member of the, um, of the uh, advisory design panel, but if you could possibly um, 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 uh, make reference to what the concern was and whether these changes address that, please. Uh, Mr. Armitage? So the changes you're referring to are they between the first application and the second application, or the changes you now see before you? Because I have not seen those. Uh, in fairness, I don't think if you're act here speaking as the chair, you can speak to the changes since, because they haven't come exactly. to that. So I'm unable to address anything that's occurred since. And if I could ask about uh, the, the, the first and second changes then. So the... Uh, Broadly speaking, the discussion of this application, um, two main subject areas. One was the building itself, and massing was part of that. Um, and then the attention to detail was an intrinsic part of how the massing is handled, because if the detailing is handled well, uh, that's one thing. And if it's not, then the massing is more important. The other s main subject area was landscaping and the effect um, on the south end of the site and the adjacent neighbour. So that's not massing related, uh, except to the extent that vegetation and its replacement by paving uh, creates a very stark um, massing statement. So to that extent, uh, that was that's uh, an important part of the massing uh, question. So coming, coming back to the massing question per se, the, the, um, the building design, it's fair to say that um, on the second application, um, most members of the panel were quite firmly against this project proceeding. Um, in the end, with conditions attached, it was approved. And so s a lot of those questions relate to the, uh, the landscaping, the south end of the site, but also there were still concerns about the, ex the architectural expression and th therefore the massing. Um, and... <clears throat> It's a, uh, Mr. Armitage. I'm just going to ask. It's a difficult thing if to I express may, in words. It is. I, and I'm getting. I'm getting to. No, no. Let me just express one thing though, because this is a bit. This is very unusual. I've never seen the chair of the advisory design panel come here to speak to an application and the subtleties of it. If you, here in that role, you have to speak for the decision made, like as the majority right. of that group, not for it's. It's a difficult thing to do. I appreciate, but not for the individual opinions that are expressed. So it's, you know, that's, that's essentially where we're at here. So if you could yeah. address the specific question of the changes between the two and then just yeah. leave it at that because I think we're down a rabbit hole here of trying yeah. to interpret oh, opinions. I, I realize and I'm struggling with this. Uh, so I just wanted to give you that background because uh, it was myself who um, steered the rest of the committee, or the panel around um, to approving it with conditions because uh, in... In my estimation, I know this is, sounds like a personal opinion, but in my estimation, the fundamentals of the uh, Uplands design guidelines were met. And there was a degree to which 
some of uh, some of us um, had prefer professional, personal quibbles with um, the way that modern materials are applied, and so on and so on. Questions of architectural authenticity, you might say. Um, but I but I said, you know, this is uh, this is all good. Uh, it's improved a little bit from before, but in essence, it met the guidelines. So that's why the the main thrust of the commentary that went with that approval ended up relating to the landscaping question and the paving question at the south end of the site and the way it um, the the amount of setback and the retaining wall, the the height of the retaining wall along the south property line and those kinds of things, because that was an area that was. We always struggle with how do we record uh, a decision and leave some room for improvement but make it possible for staff to actually interpret that and enforce it. Mm -hmm. If it's too vague, it's worthless. So if it's something like chop this off and we're good, then that nice and clear, then that's, um, that's something we can do. So to that extent, the, the, the south end of the site was, was much clearer as a, as a subject to, to address. Thank you, Mr. Armitage. It's a difficult one. Mr. Zalka, is there any, I, I'm, I'm. Yes, I just want to say thank you very much for this opportunity to, to get a feedback relating to that min, uh, to relating to that meeting. Um, uh, and as I mentioned in the, in the last uh, council meeting when we were looking at the minutes, it was hard to understand what was actually going on in the meeting because the minutes are trying to balance what you're also having a hard time kind of balancing where, where um, it appears that, uh, that the design does meet the, you know, the, the, the raw aspects of, of, of the, um, of the uh, uh, bylaw. However, with respect to um, uh, uh, design, which is not something we can capture easily uh, in a uh, in a, uh, a bylaw. Um, uh, the, the, uh, from an architectural perspective, I could see uh, in the minutes that that uh, it was sort of a yes, but yes, but yes, but. Um, what didn't come through in in the minutes, and what I very much appreciate hearing to some extent from you, was that there were actually conditions applied. That there was nothing in the minutes to indicate there was conditions applied to or or something like conditions. Or I think there was that was if I may. Or, I think there were actually were were notes within this the staff there report were notes where those staff. captures. Yes, no, no. I apologize. Just I'm the just process to... is that the staff, yes. if, if I'm clear, if I'm right on this one, that the, the the advisory design panel creates their recommendation to approve or not approve. If there's specific conditions attached to that, that those are captured in the staff report, and that's where those are reported. Not that's, and I believe those were captured in the in the staff report. Which I was able. I I didn't get the sense. Well, I I won't quibble. You, you don't have to interpret them all. the same I way. I won't Fair quibble enough. with the chair. <laughs> at all ever um, but I do much appreciate uh, um, uh, hearing um, how that meeting went since I did not attend so uh, and, and trying to, to to hear it through the through the papers is not always the easiest thing so thank you so much for the input thank you any other questions thank you mr. Armitage all right we have uh, we have the application in front of us here uh, I'm going to call anybody else from the audience who wishes to come forward to speak all right bring it back to this table uh, we have the revised plans in front of us now for siting and design approval. Yes or no? Uh, we'll move approval. So we have a move mover and Second a seconder. Second. Uh, any other discussion on this? Does the mover wish to motivate at all? I, I think um, overall um, it, it, it appears, I appreciate the landscaping um, images that really help to articulate the, the context of the the property and and the articul the architectural articulations on the north side were helpful too and so uh, thank you it looks fine to me thank you councillor green the councillor appleton yes um, thank you oh, <laughs> oh sorry sorry oh, councillor green then Apple, Council, then. yes through, councillor green through you mayor to um to, to mr whitney i want to thank you for going back working with staff and making some modifications to the design and the plan um and I, w I would also like to address a comment about what was all the fuss. Well, it, it wasn't really fuss. It was a concern for neighbors. It was a concern for the context of the uplands and the park-like setting. And I think all of us took it very seriously. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that, that you were willing to revisit your design, revisit some of the landscaping issues. And I thank you for that because it means a lot. I We have to work together if if we're going to 
do this properly. And I think it was out of respect for the neighborhood, the existing neighborhood, and the uplands itself that, that we all wanted to, to reach a better solution. So thank you. Councillor Appleton. All right, thank you, Your Worship. I, I don't want to take a bunch of time with this, but I do want to reiterate, just revisit one of my comments from uh, the last meeting, which had to do with, in my estimation, uh, part of the values that we're seeking to protect with this, with a siting and design bylaw is the actual physical siting of the building on, on literally on the site has relevance uh, to the Uplands context and, and other councillors have spoken to the importance of uh, massing and context with regards to how it how it influences the neighbours. And we talk a lot about the park-like setting of the uplands. Um, I'm also thinking about it from a natural values perspective. And if we want to call that park-like setting, or if we want to just call it the, those those natural features which are retained on a site, this is an ancillary value of properties in the uplands. So I remain a little unsatisfied with this proposal because it does not address the actual physical location. And I understand that, and I, I hear from the applicant that, that those types of things were explored. Uh, but I just think in future, for considerations, when we talk about siting, uh, which is specifically called for in the bylaw, that I would like us to see us consider the influence that siting has on the retention of natural values on that site, uh, and that we can physically look at uh, locating structures such that we can retain more urban tree canopy, that we can retain more green space on those lots. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of looking at it through that lens. And I understand that those, uh, I, I don't want to imply that the applicant hasn't done all their due diligence in f following the, the regulations and standards. Uh, I'm just pointing out because I feel like that specific element with regard to protection of those values is a little vague and it's not necessarily spelled out really clearly in, in the guidelines that we're, we're, looking to, we're, we're looking to apply here. So I, I remain personally a little, a little unsatisfied with the proposal, but then the flip side to that is, is that there isn't that standard laid out for the applicant to follow. So I would really like to see us explore that a little bit and, and, and look into, as was referenced at our last committee of the whole meeting, uh, that perhaps some elements of the upland siting and design bylaw require further granularity or clarity. Thank you, Councillor. Any other, Councillor Zelka? Uh, thank you so much, Chair. And I, 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 I actually am, am, am uh, thrilled to hear the comments from, uh, from Councillor Appleton. I also remain um, uneasy with this uh, application. Um, uh, I, I would have preferred to see a bit more articulation. I would have preferred to see, um, uh, actually, I don't want to encourage flat, flat roofed houses. I would have preferred to see a couple of changes that, that would have softened it even more um, to try and work with what was there uh, in, uh, in terms of the actual site and, and the, um, what was described to some extent as natural values. Um, I am very much appreciate, however, all the changes that were made um, uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, the, to uh, adjust the color, to, uh, to adjust the roof line to some extent uh, and to, to look at softening the, the, the starkness of the building with respect to the, the landscaping aspect. I very much appreciate the, um, the efforts that were made. Um, and I absolutely agree we need to do some more work on uh, providing f uh, better guidance, maybe through the rework of our advisory uh, planning commission and the, and the design panel um, and, uh, and re revisiting the, the bylaw. Um, uh, th having to um, uh, educate design is a hard thing. Uh, um, this, in, in, in my mind, this has uh, gotten close, better, much better, but for me, I will not be able to support this, des this going forward. Thank you. Anybody else on the motion? Uh, I won't say much here. I think uh, I'm, I'm going to support the, the application. I, I believe that it's a, uh, it's, it, the, right there, the comments back that our bylaws and, and other pieces have to influence this and, and those natural rules have to be clear, I think are, are really hit the nail on the head. Uh, I do appreciate the changes that were made to this application. I think that it's, it's, it's made an improvement. It's difficult. It's a difficult lot right on the corner facing two different streets with adjacent to two different houses. Um, it's almost recognizing that this is uh, significantly less than the maximum size allowed for a house and is still having these massing problems is reflective of that difficulty of that space. Um, but I do think within, within reason where applicants are, are building to, uh, to the code and below the, the size and 
uh, and making an effort on on these pieces. Uh, it's not my place to kind of judge the the architectural value. It's to is to see if it's meeting the sum of the pieces. I think we can do better, but I don't think it's fair for this applicant to ask them to do better all on their own. So uh, I'll, with that, I'll just call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Councillor Zalka opposed. Councillor Appleton opposed. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that. Uh, Next steps here are it goes to our uh, does it actually is it done at this point for saving and design or does it have to go back to council for final approval? There's no variances, so just here. Council would consider it in their minutes at the next council yeah, meeting. Perfect. So thank you very much, Mr. Whitney. Uh, item, item number three, we have a DVP and Ipland siting and design for 2970 Rutland Road. Uh, we had the, the majority of council able to have a look at the site this morning. Uh, and uh, I'll turn it over to Ms. Jensen to give a summary. This is a, an odd one in that it's in front of us, but with a staff recommendation not to approve. So perhaps you can give a little overview of what we're looking at. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this application is for joint consideration of both the development variance permit <clears throat> and upland siting and design to construct a large addition to an existing home. The property fronts on both Rutland Road and Beach Drive due, due to a recent consolidation of the two lots. The home itself is facing along Rutland Road. It is set back from the street and has legal non-conforming status uh, for both its existing northerly setback as well as the heights on the building. The proposed addition would bring the home closer to both side lot lines. The existing detached garage, which is located near the south lot line, would be removed and a portion of the addition would now incorporate some of that garage footprint. <coughs> uh, the area, that area does not require a variance, it does meet the setbacks. But on the north side of the home, uh, which has already got a non-conforming situation, with the addition would require a variance as well. Uh, variances are also necessary for the roof, the building, and the occupiable heights, where the design of the addition reflects the roof lines of the existing 1913 home. The advisory design panel did consider this application. They were generally supportive of the application, recommending that the massing on the north side be reduced. Uh, the panel determined that the addition was sensitive to the existing home and that high quality materials were being used. Uh, there was also some concern regarding the massing where the addition was considered too large for the width of the lot. The applicant has reduced some of the massing on the north side to bring the addition in line with the existing footprint as it, as it runs along that north boundary. Staff have reviewed the application with respect to both the zoning and the uplands guidelines. Uh, variances for height and setbacks are required for construction to proceed. And the design suggests that the proposal is not consistent with a residential park-like setting uh, with the setbacks and the flow around the home, the relationship of massing to the adjacent homes and transition between private and public space. Staff are seeking council direction. Thank you, Ms. Jensen. Uh, is the applicant here tonight? Oh, see so you at the back there. Yes, you don't have to come forward yet. If there's questions, we'll probably we probably will call you forward on this one. In fact, why don't you come forward now? Oh, please, yes, come forward. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, I will if just if you you want to introduce yourself, then we'll get to council and and sure. the committee and get to questions. Uh, my name is Ryan Timothy Townsend, and I'm the one responsible for this vision. <laughs> Welcome, I have Mr. A Townsend. Few points I'd like to say, if I may. I'm sure you're welcome to. Absolutely. Okay. So, 106 years ago, 20 days to this very day, February 27th, 1913, the building permit for the residence at 2970 Rutland Road was issued, later christened Mulberry, named after the oldest mulberry tree that gra in Vancouver Island that graces the front yard directly in front of the home's original Port Corsair, now symbolized in the bronze plaques that, in, that are embedded in the home's front entrance gates. I'm going to quote the Uplands design guidelines. The Uplands was developed as a residential park to maintain the natural beauty and the pic picturesque setting of a unique suburban landscape. This was achieved through the careful siting of houses." Unquote. Mulberry was one of the first homes built in the Uplands. William Hicks Gardner, the man that envisioned Uplands, cited this very home as a show home for the neighborhood. He actually f built this house several feet taller than what was shown on the architect's original elevations. He placed it perfectly in line with Lansdowne Road. It is perfectly placed on the axis that runs right through the heart of the uplands. 
I would find it hard to argue a more thoughtfully and importantly placed home than the original show home as envisioned by the man that envisioned Uplands. And we want nothing more than to reinforce that original vision. The current gate seemed to be a contentious issue among the planning department. They were approved less than five years ago. At that time, discussion was had, great consideration was taken, and they were approved. They felt that these, in fact, did add to the neighborhood. And I'd just like to remind everyone why they were put there in the first time, first place. It's hard to create a park-like garden when a herd of deer can roam through your yard at any given point. It really does surprise me that a pre-approved existing element would be used as a tool to hinder an application. Um, we took special care to actually protect the existing landscape within our design. Um, we actually changed the um, design of the north side of the house not to negatively impact the neighbor's hedge. And there's this thing about hedges. Um, hedges are beautiful. They've been used by the Romans. They were used to enhance some of the finest parks and gardens around the world. If you look at the original design for the uplands, the lots were much larger, and there were far fewer of them. Due to market conditions and other major elements, some of the largest lots were divided up by the end of the 1960s. Hedges are, in fact, a tool that are used very successfully to minimize the reality of smaller than desired lots. They actually make a property look larger. They create narrow forests that divide homes, add interest, and surprise. Before amalgamation, this lot had a coverage of 9.9%. Our proposed coverage is 8.18%, less than one-third of the allowable. There are few properties in the uplands that boast this low of a coverage, and certainly none built in recent years. We put tremendous thought into every single aspect of this proposal. The existing house and garage we felt right now create a visual wall across the entire property. By removing the garage, we are actually reducing the overall massing. We are opening up an unrestricted view from Rutland Road all the way to Beach Drive and back from Beach Drive all the way to Rutland Road. We are creating a view corridor, a very much reinforcing a park-like setting. Much of our square feet is in the basement. If one compares the home's main and upper floors, we're sitting at about 7,000 square feet, which is modest compared to many of the other houses that surround it. And the basement, in fact, is underground. So it doesn't seem to be fair to incorporate that within the measurement. There was one very subjective statement um, that I have to address in the report. And that was, the historical scale of the original home became lost in the overall scale of the proposed addition to this house. This was not mentioned as a concern, not by one single member of the design advisory panel. The experts that have been pointed in place found this design respectful to the original house, and it actually enhanced. It was actually enhanced as it was pointed out by the design panel members. And let's talk about adding additions to historical buildings. I chose two very notable additions that everyone knows of. Francis Rattenberry designed the original legislature building in 1891. Little, few people know that in 1913 he was commissioned to add additions that nearly doubled the building. He added wings on each side and wings to the back. No one looks at that building today and says that it gets lost within the additions. That's because not only did the new wings use the same materials, they spoke the same architectural language. The integrity of the original design was actually strengthened. It became one. And it's really hard to imagine this amazing building any other way. The Empress Hotel, another one of Rattenbury's commissions, has not fared so well. If you look at it, it's like a timeline, each edition looking slightly more out of place than the last. They tried to speak the same language, but sadly lost much in translation. You look at the original hotel and say, yeah, and this is the beautiful hotel, and on the left, this is the box it came in. Um, we are not simply adding an addition to this house. We are expanding the original vision. We are maintaining the integrity of everything this house embodies. The architectural language we have proposed is so fluent, one will be able to stand back and this house will feel as if it has always been there. It'll be hard to imagine it any other way. And that is the ultimate goal of any good design. Not mentioned once in this report was the one thing that had the most bearing on our design, which I'd say was a year and a half 
we built 3D models, we analyzed it, we looked at every possible option. We really wanted to keep it feeling like a heritage house and the proportions accurate. Not only on the front, not only on the back, but on the roof line, everything, the room proportions, the windows, everything. We wanted it as authentic as we could get it. But what limited us most was a 1.245 meter right of way that ran behind the house and divided the two lots. We couldn't cross it, we couldn't build over it. Very much we wanted to save the original home. We felt its original siting was perfect. One of our primary design goals was to maintain and even enhance the integrity of the original home. We couldn't build forward because we compromised the original facade. We couldn't go back because we ran into a right-of-way. We really only had two options, and that was to build out to the sides. We were between a rock and a hard place. When I came onto this project, the clients were actually approved to build a new 11,000 square foot house on that property. They were told it was far cheaper just to build new. That line, costs us more of our heritage buildings than any other line. They're willing to put the effort and the money into saving, preserving, and enhancing the original vision. The reality is we could simply plunk a new house in the middle of the front yard at almost twice as big, and that house could fit. And if we didn't respect the original placement of the original house, we could make that fit within every single by bylaw. When we first appeared in front of the design panel, we received extremely strong support for this project. We had three votes in favor of the proposal and one against it. The one who voted us against it actually thanked me for bringing forward such a thoughtful pro proposal, and apparently they're in short supply. He could not bring himself, though, to vote for something that did not conform. He expressed how frustrating it is. They get horrific applications come through, and there's little to nothing they can do to stop them because they conform within the rules. And yes, Mulberry, it does not conform within the rules. The same rules that were in place 106 years and 20 days ago would have prevented the man that envisioned Upland from building the house he envisioned. Just think about that one for a second. I don't, it, it doesn't conform to the rules, but it never has. There are variances in place for a very important reason. We all know one size does not fit all. There are certain situations that with very careful consideration, special rules are allowed. I believe this is a very important home. Our vision for this property takes William Hicks Gardner's original vision for the uplands and, reinfor and reinforces it. It does it through integrity, good design, and reinforces a perfectly positioned home surrounded by extensive park-like gardens. Agree or disagree with this proposal, I feel the community deserves a say and the neighbors need a say formally. Um, there are some very conflicting views, ideas about this project. That's expected. What we are doing is truly unique. It does not fit within that rigid box. To simply kill this by sending it back to the planning department or simply stamping it denied is robbing everyone who cares about this neighborhood, this home, for the opportunity, the rare opportunity to actually have a say on something as cool as what we're doing. Um, so thank you. I did bring a couple boards. I, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to be there this morning when you toured the property. Um, but I do want to point out a few things on the house um, which really sort of dictated our design. Um, so this is the original backside of the house. And you can see how dominating and tall it was. And when we joined the lots, we ended up with two fronts. We have a beach drive front and a Rutland front, and both have to be attracted from the street. So we actually took effort into making the house look lower. We incorporated a raised lawn directly behind the house that actually hid the basement level to make it soften into the landscape and really make it feel like it's always been there. We used extensive stonework on the foundation, again, to ground the house, make it feel more like it's been there for ever. The original, going back to the original house, this addition was a later addition, and its scale and proportion doesn't actually match the existing house. It looks like an add-on, an afterthought tacked on. Our big goal with this project was to make it feel as one, extend the original vision. And it's hard to do when you can't go forward, you can't go back, you can only go out. So we wanted to bring the roof lines up to the original height, and it's also about balance and proportion. And it's not just the front balance and proportion, not the back, it's the floor plan. Everything has to work 
together. And once you start hacking down one side, you end up with uh, making compromises that aren't worth it. And we felt if we're going to bring a project forward, we want to bring it back the best it can be instead of compromising it before anyone even gets to see it. We did make the one adjustment where we reduced the terrace back. So it's the house is no longer um, requiring any additional variances that it already does not have. And my last board, there is rumor on the street that it's the largest house, will be the largest house in the uplands. So I've actually had it rendered into a Google satellite image. And so let's play Where's Mulberry. It's right there. And if you want to see this closer, I can bring it up. But the house is very modest in size compared to many of its neighbors. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. Um, there we go. We have the presentation. Um, are there questions of, by the councillors of the staff or of the applicant councillor Patterson? Yes, thank you. And appreciating your comments that uh, this is an, one of the original houses in Uplands, although it's not a heritage designated property. Um, and uh, we have a lot on Beach Drive that has been consolidated into it. So the lot is larger now, which to some people would perhaps uh, make it more questionable as to a need for variances when you have an even larger lot. Um, but my real questions about this are, they are both important lots. One, because it's the original home. The other lot is on Beach Drive. And uh, right now, of course, is, is looking like a, a bare, bare lot. So, but in, in, in looking at this, I really think, as a member of council, I feel like I'm only looking at part of a programming. I have the house here, but I don't really understand the future vision for the lot on Beach Drive. And I think that that is um, certainly as important to the rest of the community as the build on this house. So I'm just wondering as to the, the not providing uh, some sort of a visionary programming for that lot so that we would have a better perspective on really what the finished product is going to be. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. And, and it's true, usually when we have these proposals, the house is cited within the, the landscaping plan, and there is no landscaping plan here. There's a drawing of the yard, but no sort of actual overarching showing of that within the landscape. Can you maybe articulate what that, what that would look like or why that's not there? Why it's not there, um, good design takes time. And we spent a year and a half getting every detail of this house just right. And we'll probably spend another year and a half figuring out the back. And when that time comes, it will be brought back to you to approve. We didn't want to rush and put together something that didn't live up to the level. And as we, the house is going to be three, four years of construction. So we have a bit of time once the house starts where you can start to get a better vision of the property feel. You can stand on the terrace, look out. You can really get a better sense of, you know, getting a really solid design. So I don't think it's really a question of, you know, you don't have the information to make the decision about the back. I think the real question is, is it, would it be possible to develop that backyard in a way that showcases the house that would look absolutely incredible. Because ultimately, everyone has an ultimate say later on of what that back piece looks and like. And you can reject it till it gets exactly what you want. We just wanted to get started on the house because it's a three to four year project. And we don't want to spend another two years working on the back half. So that's the reason um, the planning department was OK with us splitting the application into two parts. Um, we did discuss it at the design panel, and we were actually thanked for taking the time to actually keep the whole project up to a certain quality instead of rushing it to try to just, you know, hit a deadline. Okay. Councillor Patterson, anything else? I, you know, I, under, I understand what you're saying, that it, it took a lot of time to do, to do the home, but... Uh, you know, and, and, and there are a lot of details to, to the interior of the house, but uh, I think for, for, for myself as a member of council, I've, it, it's quite important to understand what the imaging is going to be from also that property on Beach Drive. And I think as a, 
uh, certainly neighbors to the property, will also be interested in that. Thank you. Councillor Green, then Councillor Braithwaite. Thank you, and, and through you, Mayor, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, I think for me, it feels like an incomplete application. Uh, and I say that because we just, on, on the last application, we talked about the importance of context and the importance of the park-like setting and so on. Beach Drive is a marine scenic drive, so I think um, Councillor Patterson's point about the fact that that lot is as important as the Rutland property um, is valid. Um, and certainly, I, I feel that this is just, it's, it's incomplete. It would be very helpful for me to make a final decision on this property if I knew what that view corridor would look like between Rutland and Beach Drive, and that's, that's a huge piece of property. So mm -hmm. it, it would be helpful. And, um, and that's just part of my own concern. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Green. Uh, do, do you have any sort of general yep. comments yep, on that please, look? Yes, I do. Um, one of the other reasons was um, if this gets rejected because of the variances and they say we have to reduce it in size, it may turn into a completely different project. We may have to, who knows what it will become. So it's, um, to put another year and a half of design in, when you guys could right now say, absolutely not, we're not allowing that northern setback, your design is in the garbage, um, it just, under the circumstances when we're kind of walking a delicate line, because we don't even know, if this house isn't approved, it could be a new house. It could be, who knows what could be done on that property. And it's good, like the problem is, real good design takes time. And it, so often it's rushed. And I, I totally understand um, where you're coming from. But you also got to be realistic that, um, and also look at this and say, well, they did this level of design on the front, this quality. And so we trust, and ultimately, like I said before, you have complete final say at the end of the day. So if you don't believe there is a way that you could make that look good from Beach Drive, it's like, and then I understand, it'd be worth just completely killing at this point. But if you do believe it's in good hands and we're gonna capably be able to um, you know, finish that, and sh once we will, you will see us again um, with a spectacular, you know, it's a garden. That's what it is. You're just gonna see a big garden. And there's nothing more park-like than that. Councilor Green, to follow up? Just a really quick comment through you, Mayor. Mr. Townsend, um, I, I, I was previously chairing the Heritage Commission, and I, prior to that, I was council liaison to the Heritage Commission a number of years ago. Um, one of the tools that, that is available, though, on a property like this that might be workable, and I don't know if you've thought about it, is a Heritage revitali Revitalization Agreement. And for the community, that can be a win-win outcome. So uh, that is one of the first houses built. In fact, I believe it was a show home. I think yes. you mentioned that. It was the show home for the Uplands, Uplands Park development, um, one of the first in 1913. Is there a way that that, that house could be preserved and, and the rest of the lot, which is now consolidated, I believe the owner mentioned that it, yes. the yes. consolidation legally took joined. legally two months ago. Is there a way to use the entire property and still accomplish or achieve what you would like to achieve and it's just a question i don't know yeah, um, how would um ref, ref, thank you um please what do you mean by use the entire property um what do you mean by that you mean put a secondary house on the property well utilizing the beach drive frontage as opposed to and and that might require i'm not a planner i'm um, and i'm not an architect but all i'm saying to you is that the hra is a tool that OPE has yeah. used in previous years to to have a win-win a, a outcome for the community. Yeah. We, we preserve an original home and property in exchange for um, something else. And and it's 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 been an effective tool in the past. Yeah. If I may on this one, the um, I think the intent of the owner has been to consolidate the lot into a single large yeah. green space. Uh, and an HRA would be primarily used, and staff, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, it's really there as a rezoning tool, and we're not looking for any rezoning here. We're really looking at some variances, and uh, or at some variances. And so that it's not, it, this would not be an appropriate tool, I don't believe, in this setting for an HRA would not normally kick in. in this, and it and would also delay the process quite considerably. Ms. Jensen, you don't, is that? 
You're correct. They're typically used as part of, uh, as similar to a rezoning tool, but it would really depend on you know what is the ultimate goal of the applicant in terms of what they would like to put on the entire site. So if they were looking at a um, more buildings than what they were permitted or a higher density than what they were permitted, you could use it in that situation, for example. Thank you. And I think just importantly, we have an application in front of us that fits within the zoning but does require variances. So that's the tools that we have in front of us right now. Councilor Braithwaite. Thank you, um, Julia Chair. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I'm not um, worried about what's going to happen on the Beach Drive property because I, I agree with you. I think that the time and energy that you're putting into the the actual building um, will dictate what's going to happen in the front of the property. So that There's a hundred dollar fine for that. You know that, right? Whoever that is. Not me. It's not, not me. you. <laughs> no, I thought it was, but no, that's me. Um, so I have two two comments. I think. Um, so one was, uh, you mentioned that uh, it was said in the report that this would be one of the largest homes in the neighborhood. So, and you've said that it isn't going to be. So I'm just wondering from staff if you can um, talk to that point that you have in your report. It does say um, relationship and character and massing. Um, this would result in one of the largest homes in the neighborhood. So is there, a, a, can you maybe speak to that? It's, thank you. Ms. Jensen. Thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, we did a, a survey of all the properties that are in that immediate area um, based on the square footage that's provided through BC assessment. Uh, the home that is proposed is at 11,840 square feet. The next largest home is at 11,100. Everything else in that neighborhood is between three and four thousand square feet. Okay, I see somebody shaking their head one way there, and I'm not really sure how to. Well, me, I'll let the applicant just answer that uh, from their perspective as well. It's fair, Mr. Townsend. Um, I think you really have to take into account the amount of space that's underground. Um, there's one house directly beside this. If it had a basement it would be a shockingly high square footage. We, you know, our basement is what's bringing us to that level. It's hard to include what's partially underground to that massing, which seems to be the big problem. And then I also, you know, would like to reiterate the fact within the, you know, within the allowable size, we could build twice that big in the middle of the front yard and it would fit within the bylaw. So I just find it, you know, I don't like that size thing being, you know, because there's, there's so many um, different ways you can look at it. Thank you. Councilor Braithwaite. Uh, thank you. And then the other um, question I have is on the overlook and privacy issues. It says the home would sit higher than properties to the north and the south and overlook may be a concern. So I'm not sure whether staff wants to speak to this as by the, how the overlook would be or if the applicants I'll, would. I'll, I'll direct that to the applicant. I think it's spoken to by the staff in their report and I think it's fair for you to be able to address that, that comment. When we um, designed the house, we were very careful on what rooms we put where. So on the north side, which is the most contentious issue, is the library. And it's a two-story library with a narrow mezzanine along one side and two tiny little windows. So it's not a bedroom. It's something that'll, you know, you'll go up there to fetch a book. No one's going to be hanging out there. We put that specifically there because of the overlook issues. On the other side um, is basically a closet and um, the master bedroom bathroom, which will have a small window, or actually two little windows. Um, so we did uh, take into consideration the overlook and the views and make sure that um, nothing was, you know, it was all covered. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. Councilor Braithwaite. So, so sorry, on the north side, it's not um, like, it's not a two-story like overlook from, I must be reading the plan wrong. Is it not an open space to the, to the lower floor? Yeah, there's a mezzanine. Oh, there's a mezzanine. A, mezzan a, a narrow mezzanine that wraps around the room. Okay, and then so that so that has to be there. That can't just out of curiosity because that seems to be where the big issue is. That can't be pulled back a little bit on the upper level. Um, well, we could um, we could re yeah. It comes back to like to actually physically bring the whole side of the house in. Um, the issue with that you get back to the balance 
of this house and being respectful to sort of the integrity and the design of a heritage house. There's sort of certain proportions you have to maintain or else it looks like you've, you know, you compromised. You've, and we did discuss that when we originally, you know, worked on the design, but we didn't want to bring you one with, you know, some weird elements that were forced in because of these restrictions and be, you know, criticized for a bad design. We felt we need to bring the strongest design we can and hope you can see the vision. Um, and that's what we brought forward. And and I, I truly appreciate that. And, and I actually really appreciate the fact that you're not ripping down the house. I mean, that's a big bonus to me right there. But, um, yeah, I'll wait and hear what some of the other councillors perhaps have comments on the, the massing on that side. Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Question to the applicants for you, and it's a very simple one. Um, you've alluded on a couple of different occasions here about the detail and the time taken in the design. Um, and... Uh, that there was a lot of thought and uh, input into each aspect of the proposal. And I guess my question is simple is, um, why are we then being brought variances? Like, why is this proposal being brought forward with variances? And I would prefer, um, I'm aware that the existing structure has non-conforming elements to it. Um, you are proposing a new structure. So those variances do not necessarily have to be kept and brought forward into the new structure. So that's just my simple question. Um, so we'll go one by one. Um, we have an occupancy height um, variance. So to have the additions upper floors a meter lower than the original house, um, that probably wouldn't lead to a very nice design. And you know, if you wanted the main floor, you would leave you with what six foot ceilings. Um, the original roof height, the upstairs um, ceilings are seven foot six inches. So if we were to bring the roof down a meter, um, that wouldn't make a very nice space. Um, the original house um, is already over the um, setback on the north, and we, um, you know, are just basically adding to what's already there. And we'd be happy to go backwards, except we run into our right of way that we cannot cross and then we're also up against being very respectful um, to a historical house and it comes back to that thing where it's this weird idea that good design can only fit within this rigid box if it fits in it's good if it's outside of it it's bad but you can find a million bad designs that fit within a rigid box um, and there are variances in place for a reason. When you have these specific circumstances where we have a heritage house that is actually taller, and it's sort of, through this whole process, you realize it would have been a lot easier probably just to start from scratch. We could have just, you know, it wouldn't have respected the original placement, it wouldn't have respected the original house, but we could easily conform within that box that everyone seems to define as, this is the only way it can be a good design and respectful to the community is if it fits within this box, but it's a box that didn't even exist when the Uplands was you know, designed. The lots have been sliced, there's so many changes that have happened, you know, and here we are, we're taking two lots, turning into one, adding more park-like space than anyone else has. And it's, you know, we've added so much and we're giving so much. And we've talked to the neighbors. The neighbors down below, they would have had an 11,000 square foot house looking into their yards. Now they're looking into a park-like garden. You know, we've added so much to this, for the community to this project. And that's where it's, it would be really nice if it could go to council so we could actually hear from the different neighbors, the heritage people, and actually see what people really think about this project. Because it's not like we set out, we're gonna build the biggest house and we're gonna ask for every variance. We just got stuck with certain limitations and we wanted to execute a really good design. And sometimes, and we weren't willing to sacrifice good design for what works out to, I think, eight cubic meters of space. The existing garage is actually over two setbacks from where the original lot sat, and we're removing that. So we're actually, we're gaining, we're removing a lot more volume than that little tiny sliver we're adding to the other side of the house. So I feel that we've, you know, made great effort to like offer so many advantages to this project. Um, and it would be really nice if um, we could see sort of look at the, some of the positive aspects because it seemed to get caught up on this one little line that we're over so slightly that um, it seems a shame that that could potentially, you know, kill this project and, you know, who knows the consequences. Well, we're not at the killing the project stage just yet. <laughs> 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 well, uh, Councillor Zelka. 
Uh, thank you so much, Chair, and uh, thank you so much to the proponent. Uh, is it Mr. Townsend? Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. I much appreciate uh, the 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 uh, the design. I much appreciate uh, what you're attempting to do to uh, to preserve the heritage of Oak Bay. I mean, that's that's one of our fundamental uh, raison d'être that we have in this area to try and preserve the heritage. And I see what you're trying to do. Um, and. Uh, this being a showroom, this being built before the by bylaws were done, it wasn't placed in the right spot. Oh dear, and now we're having to work with that. So I understand that you're kind of doing your best to work within um, the, the limitations of the lot and the fact that, uh, that the lot line was drawn where it was drawn. Um, um, so I just want you to know that in general, I'm in favor with what you're trying to do here. It, it's a bit larger than I'm kind of comfortable with, but I, I see it, I get it. I absolutely get it, and I love the fact that you're trying to preserve this uh, one of the one of these original homes from 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 the uplands. Thank you, by the way. That's fantastic. Uh, I do. Um, 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 unfortunately, you, like others building houses in the uplands, sometimes get burned by Oak Bay process. <laughs> so I don't want you to get burned, but uh, some of these questions are coming out of um, uh, me feeling like I've been burned from from some of the past processes that have occurred. Uh, most likely, and and I'll, I'll have to point the finger back at at me in terms of or us in terms of the fact that we're still trying to perfect an imperfect system. Mm -hmm. um, so please uh, <laughs> bear with us as yes. we're trying to work on this. Um, uh, in the, in, in, um, for other um, um, Uplands developments that have come forward with what appears to be like this, an unfinished application through a development variance permit application where uh, they want to, uh, the, the proponent uh, theoretically wants to get, you know, this much done and then we know there's going to be a follow-up uh, uh, um, uh, um, application for other works to follow. Um, uh, sometimes it's hard to know how to approve this not knowing what's coming then. So I completely understand the, the, the comments that have come forward from some of the other councillors. What would help me is, uh, number one, why did you, uh, or why did your, um, uh, the, the owners uh, 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 combine the two uh, lots? And what are the plans for this rather large and empty lot uh, down to Beach Drive? What's the plans for that? Uh, okay. What buildings are going to be built? What's it going to look like? I just have very general. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just amorphous. thank you, and, and I believe you answered once. It'll be garden. Yes, uh, it's going to uh, be garden. It, there is going to be a swimming pool. Uh, there's going to be a greenhouse, um, and there's probably going to be a little pool structure that um, will hold the mechanical systems for the pool. Um, and that's what it will contain. Um, I just want to touch one thing too about, again, going back to the, you know, this large issue. Um, you also got to take into consideration that from the Rutland Road, this house is, from the street, it's about 150 feet back. From Beach Drive, it's 250 feet back. So you're viewing this house any given time at quite a distance. You look at a lot of other houses that have been approved where they've built right on the property, the setback. You know, these massive houses are so imposing, so in your face. Because this house is set back, um, it really is going to just sink into the landscape like it's always been there. They chose to join the lots because um, they originally bought the lot, the second lot, to build this dream home because everyone said it was too expensive to do what they did with or um, to renovate this existing house. And then I came along and was the one who said, you know what you should do? is you should, you know, get, we can get everything you want in this house, or at least I hoped, uh, or hoping, I should say. Um, and they're avid gardeners. Um, and this would be spectacular. Because to me, it felt like, dear God, you know, you're, you're building a home in your backyard and then you're going to move into it. It's, this house was so perfectly positioned for natural light. It's perfectly in line with Lansdowne Road. When you look out the front door, you see perfectly up the street. So you say that, you know, you can't really say the house wasn't perfectly positioned. It really was. Like, in an axis through the um, um, uplands, it really was a very careful placement. Um, so we really tried to work with that. And then, so to lose that view from a new house where you look back at the house you moved out of, um, just wasn't creating this massive park like and that was really the big thing was to extend gardens and our design also was to incorporate the main living space into the yard um, hence the raised lawn and all that okay, Councillor Zelka uh, um, thank you uh, you talk almost as much as I do I'm very <laughs> impressed <laughs> maybe no one else is but I'm impressed <laughs> 
<laughs> so thank you. No problem. Um, Anytime. <laughs> so uh, what I hear is that uh, for the for the rather large property uh, to, to be to be strive, the intention is to have the only structure there is a pool structure, an, an ancillary structure for the pool. Yeah. Are you anticipating a garage or no. or road access from from beach or anything uh, like there that? There will be no. Um, there will be no road access. There will be no garage. Um, we looked at putting a garage, but the problem is as soon as you do that, you end up taking up all this green space. And it's not only the garage, but it's all the space that you have in front of the garage. Um, so you almost, you're building like a helipad in the middle of your yard. Um, and the way the lot's laid out with the Gary Oaks, to be respectful to that, if we tried to put one off Beach Drive, it would turn half that side into pavement to get that far enough back and to create the place for the cars. So very much in this application, we've tried to provide as much green space as we possibly can. Um, you know, and there will be and also a greenhouse structure on the property as well, off to. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you, if I may continue, much appreciated. And thank you for your indulgence for allowing us to uh, explore all aspects yeah, of what this. what we're here design. for. That's right, excellent. So um, uh, um, a question through you, uh, Chair, to, to staff. Um, a heritage revitalization agreement, um, would it, uh, would something like that, an innovative use of that heritage revitalization agreement, would it allow uh, that right of way to be moved? I'll just maybe reframe that. Is there any mechanism by which we move rights of way? There is, but obviously, uh, um, maybe I should say it, it wouldn't be the HRA that would, would cause that to occur. It would be uh, done through our engineering services department. Uh, I, I thank you. I just wanted to explore that just to see whether it was entirely possible. And it sounds like with a bit of time and, and effort and probably money, it is possible. But uh, I did want to explore in particular the heritage aspect. I love what you're doing, uh, maintaining the heritage aspect of this building, and I definitely want to continue to support that. Um, uh, have you, or I should say the owners, considered registering or designating the home on the heritage registry? Um, I believe like they've they've registered but they haven't actually or it's 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 listed but it's not um, actually protected on the registry uh, the existing house you know a 1913 house doesn't really work well for modern living in a lot of ways they had tiny little kitchens yeah. um there were issues so there's certain things we needed to add to the house to make it actually a home that they wanted and we tried to do that in the most sensitive way we possibly could and like I say we, we don't look at it as, as additions we're literally extending the original vision of the house um, to add uh, you know the library and kitchen and those are and an additional two um, bedrooms I completely understand um, and uh, and what I've seen other uh, proponents do as, as as part of a give and take in terms of asking for this much and yet giving back to the Oak Bay or the community this much um, and uh, and and that's never you know uh, easy to easy to balance certainly at, at this table, but uh, I can tell you that that uh, it, it might influence uh, um, how uh, how I move forward if if this if it was a designation aspect included potentially. But I did want to confirm: is this building registered on 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 the list? No. If I may, the property is not on the heritage register. Not it on the heritage not designated. Registry. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that's enough for now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Councillor Ney and then Councillor Patterson. Thank you. Um, through you, Chair. Uh, my first question is just to staff, if I may. Um, so, um, in the in the report, the the application went through the advisory design panel, and you're reporting back uh, what occurred there. So, um, it it looks like um, the applicant was. Uh, asked to revise the plan and res uh, reduce that size on the north side, right? And the, the applicant shared with us that that indeed was done. I was just wondering, so did that go, what, did that then go back to the ADP to review the, 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 the revised plan as well? Jensen? Yeah, if I, if I may know, the, the design panel considered the application at their last meeting. They made a recommendation to approve it. There were four for it to go forward. There were a number of things that they wanted to address, and that and the main one being that that be pulled back from the north oh, property okay. line. So that has been done, and that's the those are the plans that you see in front of you. Okay, so that's an approval through the ADP, basically. Okay, so the comment in the report that says the panel recommended the council consider approving the proposed development to construct 
an addition to the principal building. At, what does that mean? That recommendation being that they were approving the proposed addition okay. to the to the main home, which okay. is the principal okay. building. Okay, I got you. Okay. So um, through you, Chair, to the applicant, if I may, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, so uh, on your plans here, I, um, I, I, I personally, I, it makes, to me, it resonates what you're attempting to do in terms of um, trying to preserve the sort of original character of that original home. I, I mean, it's remarkably stately and um, it's, it's got that opulence to it, but uh, it's, it's, um, it, it's very tastefully set on the, on the property too. It is large, it is large, but um, I, I think that's a, a bit of the issue that I would like to just ask you a couple questions about. So, um, so, so the main the main issue that we're getting feedback here on, and I, perhaps you could um, respond to this. It, it continues to be around the um, the congestion of the property on that north side. Okay, and so it's compromising the park like setting. That's what we're reading here in our report on that north side. So I was just wondering if, to begin with, you could just speak to that. Um, that constraint on that north side in terms of it compromising the park-like setting. Mr. Townsend? Um, it, as of right now, the house, you could say, compromises the park-like setting because between the garage and the house, it literally stretches the entire property line. Um, the reality is, you know, that's where the original house was positioned and it was positioned there for a reason. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's a little closer to the property line. You know, ideally the property line would be moved over slightly, um, but that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, but you also got to look at when you consider like park like it's so objective you know we've actually opened up the south side between the house and the neighboring property corridor we've added so much frontage on both sides again park like so it, it's really i struggle with that you know it's the term that this application isn't park like because it's more park like than almost probably any other application that's went through in a very mm -hmm. long time it's just because of you know restrictions and current conditions, you know, we're maintaining, you know, a, a setback that already exists. Mm -hmm. And we're, we are taking the house up a little higher, like to match the original vision, but that's more to just for integrity, design, balance, just to go over a couple square f uh, foot sort of the basement's about 5,000 square feet. Um, each main and upper floor is about 3,500 square feet. Um, so the actual footprint of the main living space isn't excessive. The, the upper floor isn't excessive. It's the basements that's excessive. And part of that's because we incorporated basement underneath the terrace, which is completely blocked from view uh, by our raised lawns. So we are very sensitive. We, like I say, I'd like to say over again, we didn't set out to build the biggest house. And we, we had this space underneath the terrace so that you know we could have just, I guess, left as nothing and wasted space, but we utilized it. But we took special care. Um, by not adding that raised lawn, the house would have looked very tall, very stacked, almost McMansion-y. But we really tried to anchor it in. So uh, we did try to keep it feeling as small as we could. The other thing that makes it look big is the fact it's thin but we went why that has to happen. It's just because we're squeezed between two points. Okay. Okay. Councilor Nagy, another question? Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Townsend, I was wondering, um, you're preserving the existing house. Uh, how much of it actually will be preserved? Like, is it all the walls, the interior? What's going on there? The entire um, front facade mm -hmm. um, will be preserved. Um, and I'd say probably... Um, because we're reconfiguring the design a little, because it's hard to, you know, add an addition and keep all, you know, the three square kind of the same, we're taking it more to a more traditional four square design. Um, and so we've had to move a few walls, but you're, you're still maintaining of the original house, I'd say 80 to 90% of it um, is, will be completely within that new um, envelope. And the complete original facade will be untouched. Um, they wanted us, you know, to strip it and, you know, redo it because it was supposed to be cheaper, but we're actually, we're spray foaming it to provide having to restucco it and we're going to blend everything else we're doing into that original so we don't have to, 
you know, lose any of the original beauty of that home. So you're talking about the exterior as you were explaining that. Not, not is that correct? Yes. Yeah, when you're talking about the original facade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. I c through you, chair. Could I ask staff one more question? Of course. Yeah. Yes. Tough to so, um, I, I'm just trying to understand what are what the applicant's options are um, in, in for this property. So the applicant could actually, with a building permit. Um, if, if not deal with the existing um, structure and uh, propose another, um, make another proposal for an, another uh, structure, uh, in which case uh, could be issued a building permit to have this, um, the, the current dwelling demolished. Is, is that correct? Ms. Jensen? There's currently no protection on this home in terms of a covenant or the heritage register or anything like that. Um, but because it is sited within the uplands area, council still has the ability to approve any new design that would go on that site. So mm -hmm. we would not uh, be able to issue a permit to remove the existing building unless council had approved a design for whatever was going to replace it. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just wanted to understand that. And uh, one other thing, going back and forth here to the applicant, there is no um, outdoor garage currently, and um, I, I, I'm not sure where it would go right now. But is there any plan at all? I'm uh, I, zero plan to add a garage um, for the. Zoning were required one covered parking yeah. spot, which we use the Port Corsair um, as the one covered parking spot, and then the rest are just outdoor parking. Okay. I, I, I mean, it's in a way, it's not my business, but I mean, usually people do have underground, undercover uh, garages. It's just, I, I know she got some nice cars there in the driveway, nice electric cars, um, but it, there's no desire to have that. They, they've lived in that home for 10 years and never once parked in the garage. Uh, so yeah. the idea of occupying the amount of space that would be required for a garage in the area out front of garage yeah. for something they've never used in 10 years yeah. um, seems like kind of a silly thing to do. Okay, that always has made sense to me, but um, it's not necessarily the case for many. Um, okay, that's it for me for the time being. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor. I have Councillor Patterson, the Councillor Green, then Councillor Braithwaite. Thank you, Mayor, and through you to the applicant again, and thank you for your patience, Mr. Townsend. Um, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, certainly we have all uh, stated that the design is very gracious. It's, it, it's, a, it's a lovely design for the home, uh, but you did comment that on the, the, the vacant property, certainly the intent to, well, either have park-like, but with a swimming pool, and swimming pools require equipment houses and often cabanas, and quite often swimming pools are, um, they're not highly compatible with a lot of trees. So th this is, you know, part of my pro problem in not having at least, and I'm not talking about full design work done, but a programming that would give a better indication of what the long-term usage would be because swimming pools also require fencing. You need, you know, you have to have security. There's all of, all of these types of things. So I, I still do have um, a lot of questions in my mind as to how that will all be achieved and, you know, it, it will be prevented from looking like a, um, a rear yard <laughs> coming off of Beach Drive with the fans for the pool um, and these types of things. So... And right now, that that's uh, there's just nothing. You know, we we've heard what you've said, and I don't doubt what you're saying. But it would be very helpful to have a better concept of what this is going to look like four or five years down the road when the house finally gets finished. Thank you, Mr. Um, Townsend. We were required to provide a tree planting plan for the back property, which you guys um, should all have. The lot. 
is incredibly big. So the pool is a small little dot. So it's really does not affect the trees when you're laying out a 30 foot pool on a 150 foot, you know, 100 foot wide lot. We also, um, the pool they're using is going to have a cover to which, so there'll be no fencing around it. Um, but again, these are, these are all details that we will be coming forward with a second application um, at that time. And so it really comes down to, you know, if, if you don't like it, you can reject that half till we get it exactly what you like. So if, if you don't feel that we can provide you with a back landscape that would meet the level of the home we've designed, um, then I could see, um, you know, not letting it go any further. Um, but you, you will have completely that opportunity to review it and approve it. We can't do anything without your approval. And at, uh, yeah. Thank you. Anything else? I have uh, Councillor Green, then Councillor Breith Breithwaite. Thank you, and through you, Mayor. Mr. Townsend, thank you very much. I agree you've been very patient and you've been very willing to answer questions, and I do appreciate that. And overall, I appreciate what you're trying to do, and I appreciate your, your design, the quality of materials, and I was at the advisory design panel meeting when this proposal was, w was discussed in some detail. What jumps out for me in the report is this paragraph, based on the size and dimensions of the subject site, staff are not supportive of the variances as proposed. The proposal is inconsistent with the requirements of the OPE zoning by law, and proposed additions could be designed could be designed to meet required heights and setbacks. The proposal is also considered to be inconsistent with several of the Upland's design guidelines, particularly its impact to setbacks, the park-like setting, and character and massing. So that, for me, is a key paragraph in the staff report. And we rely on staff's professional opinion on, uh, on these things, as well as their interpretation. Um, and I agree with you that some of it is subjective. I, I don't mean the staff report. I mean those of us sitting at the table. It is a subjective exercise often. But the bottom line is that, unfortunately, this, this, this original home, if it is altered in this way, and it will be, um, if, if this proposal goes forward, OPE has lost an opportunity to, to protect it and designate it because those are huge exterior changes that otherwise would be under very strict um, heritage guidelines if the house remained intact. And I appreciate that you're saving the facade um, and, and all of that. But I guess my biggest concern is, is there another option? And my, that's my biggest question that would, would help in preserving the existing home and providing the applicants with the home that they, re they would really like to build. Um, so that's that's where I'm sitting at the moment, and I do appreciate it's 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 a very difficult challenge, and um, and I'm I'm certainly mindful of that. Thank you. A rhetorical question, I think, for the most part. <laughs> so it's um, it's we're yeah we are altering you know the original home as i use the example the legislature they doubled its size but yet it now feels like one um and there are you know the reality is it's not big enough um for you know they, they want a family the house just isn't big enough um for their family so they need you know additional space they don't want to you know just slap on random you know additions they want to do it right and um it's sort of one of these processes, you know, in a perfect world, the additions that were added later would be ripped off and it would be, it's already been altered and it would be put back to how it was originally built, but that's not going to happen. And actually the current additions, what we're doing makes it, um, reinforces the original vision better than the pre-approved additions do. Um, the only risk with sort of projects like this is if it becomes too difficult because it, it's, it's obviously far more expensive to go this route. And if it becomes also more, so much more difficult, so much red tape to actually, you know, do this, it's, this is why we can end up, you know, it's just so much easier, cheaper. I think, we, I think we've answered need. this question already, thank so and we have to be respectful of some of the time here. Councilor Braithwaite. Um, thank you. Um, and through you, Chair, just going on something that um, Councilor Ney brought up, which was um, the demolition of the house. If, if 
this did not go forward. Um, in my mind, the house could be de uh, demolished, and this uh, these lots could go back to two lots, and then we could be faced with having. Uh, what size houses do we think? Um, maybe staff can answer that for me. What size, uh, the maximum house size on each of these lots? Would they be like 8,000 square foot houses or 9,000 square foot houses-ish? <laughs> Quick math there, Ms. Yeah. Jensen. How Quick are you doing? Math. I'll let Ms. Jensen answer the question. Yes, so the property has been consolidated to one lot. No, I understand. Uh, so to take it back to two lots, we would have to know what those lots look like. Would they qualify under the existing zoning? I would have to take a look and see how it actually complied with the existing zoning and frontages and so on. If it were the previous two lots that they had in place, uh, they would be looking uh, again at lot coverage of 25%, a floor area ratio of, of uh, 0.4. So I'm guesstimating you're still looking at two larger houses. Yeah. Okay. That's what I. That's what I was thinking. Um, and then, if uh, you've kind of, you might have answered part of my next question, which is through you, Chair. Um, if this house went ahead in its current state, and if uh, in the future they decided not to do the garden in the front beach drive lot, but sell that beach drive lot. That, so they wanted the, the lot separated again. Would that be possible? Like, could, could they build this house, separate the lots, and sell off the front lot and have a house built there anyway? And then what would that do to the, the, the variances that we could be putting forward now? Um, there's a bit of a speculation. Ms. Jensen, do you want to answer that question? Uh, if council went ahead and approved this, it would have legal variances now attached to it. So if they chose to move forward with trying to separate that lot off again, uh, it would be looked at in terms of, uh, again, the zoning that is on the property. Do they meet minimum setbacks? Do they meet their lot coverage? And uh, with the with the house and now as built, is it sitting on a property that would also... Um, maintain those requirements okay thank you that's all i have thank you and just rough back of napkin you know probably eleven thousand square foot house for each of those lots if you did to the maximum so and we don't have to approve the maximum every time so on both lots you could have an eleven thousand square foot in, house. That, yeah. in that range council green um i just i want to move this forward i, I i'm trying to consolidate a little bit of what, what i've heard here and I've, i haven't said anything yet so i'll speak up uh, one, uh, it is a large house, um, but I will say this, uh, unlike uh, the, the Uplands is not designed to be all mansions, um, but this stretch along Beach Drive and Rutland area is really a, an anchor point for some of these larger houses. So it's an appropriate place for a large house. I think where we are looking at some of these larger houses, this is geographically within that Uplands consistent with the historical aspects of very large houses, both on the waterfront side and on this side. Um, I really do appreciate the efforts to maintain the heritage piece. It is not designatable uh, under this model. They're just having, I've sat around the heritage <laughs> commission long enough. There's way too many alterations here for it to qualify as a heritage home. So we're really looking at it as a, a nod to the existing house, but really a new design that, that tries to encompass that, that historical aspect of it. And I think we can respect that, but it has to be said, the asked about heritage designation, it, it would have to be largely that the original house, um, I really appreciate the lot coverage aspect of this. I think it really has to be highlighted, the fact that while it is very large, it's also a very small percentage of the overall lot. Um, it's so far below the allowable building side, size for this lot, and I think you highlighted quite accurately that setbacks uh, make a huge difference. Uh, a large house adjacent to the, to, the pro to the drive is significantly larger than it is set so far back. Um, my primary concerns with this are threefold. Uh, one, I think that the second story setback on the north side is the one concern I have in terms of the overall design. Um, I think that that's always kind of the, the looming north half of the building, uh, casts the most shadow, has the most impact on terms of massing. Um, and I guess that ties into my one of my three points is that symmetry isn't always the right mix. I, it's, it's a very symmetrical design. Uh, those original houses, they typically had a little sort of sunroom on the lower off to one side or the other to kind of break some of that massing up. And I... I don't think it would be wildly inconsistent to have a little bit of a down tier on that one side, but I think that would have to come back. I'm sure you've thought about that. It would be interesting to hear 
uh, from you. Uh, I'll leave that as a question to come back to me after the end of this. Um, you know, when in looking at that, what why that couldn't be considered, especially given that's an open space largely as a library. And last, uh, we're looking at these houses typically built. This is the current ones there for 106 years. Can we not find a design that would last for another similar period of time or longer? Uh, and in that context, I am curious: is there any consideration of just of adding a garage into into the building on that basement level on that side of the building? It would add no more paving, um, and add even if it was one or two. Uh, garage spaces it would make that a very usable space even just for storage uh, for a very long time on that one side so two primary questions one uh, looking at the softening of that north edge and two uh, consideration of, of garage within the basement structure itself um, we did actually look at um, incorporating a garage um, into the basement uh, but if you look at any 1913 house, um, they never put garages in the basement. And we felt it was a detail that just compromised the integrity of a 1913 design. We really want, like when people looked at this house, the goal inside and out was people will have no idea. They will think it is original. And that's the ultimate goal. So any chance we got where we could... Uh, we weren't willing to sort of compromise and at the end of the day like really the garage is not it's not needed it's just an expensive building that takes up a bunch of green space and adds a bunch of pavement out front to house stuff that you probably don't need anyway that now can fit in the dark corner of the basement um as far as can, the I, can I just add just as, as a as an add-on to that and what the reason i'm asking the question is um you know in say 20 or 30 years time and there's hover hover cars around or something to for it but you know, if if someone does want to put a garage into that space, then it has to be considered within the context of that building. So if there's no sort of logical place that you could put that building without impacting either the front look of it or, 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 or building into the back in that kind of context, then uh, you may have to destroy, you know, that, that, that look of that building to add in something that some a future owner may want on that. That's the, the primary reason I'm asking that question, um, is that, that there may actually be a, an improvement sort of in the 100-year the lifespan of the house as opposed to, Building what's wanted now, but in 10 or 15 years yeah. may want to be changed. We did, um, out the back of the house, there's a large raised lawn. And early in the discussions, there was a suggestion to put an underground garage underneath the raised lawn. Um, so then we aren't taking away any green space. And we are sort of allowing to park a lot of cars and not really affecting the property. So if a little bit of thinking outside the box, um, there are so many options to adding those spaces in, in other parts. They can be on either part of the property. They could end up on the beach drive side or that. And as soon as you go, like I say, underground, um, it's a lot easier to conform within a property. And I can assure you anyone who buys this property will have the money to do virtually whatever they want. Right. And the second part, the setback, the softening of the second side setback on the north. Um, I'm just going to use my board again. So one of our biggest goals was um, when you're kind of enlarging a house like this, you want the original house to merge seamlessly into the new vision. Um, we wanted to keep sort of the proportions um, in check with the original. And we did fully mock this up in 3D, and we played around with many different options. And to narrow this, to just to narrow the upper floor, um, didn't suit, it didn't look like anything they would have done um, in a 1913 house. You know, there's lots of things we could do to, to f you know, try to wedge it into this rigid box that everyone seems to think that good design can only fit. Uh, but we really, you know, felt that the only way we could offer this in its full potential was to uh, be respectful to the actual designs. And that's why it's very difficult. You don't see many new houses that feel and look like an old house because there's certain balances, proportions, window wall ratios that you have to obtain to get the feel of an authentic old house. And that's really why they brought me onto the project um, was for my skill level in that. Um, and that's why, so to literally, if we start messing with this, it could send everything you change. It affects the roof line, it affects, it's not just a simple, oh, let's just move that wall in. It affects this room, which is a effect into that room. And next thing you know, you have a total rework of the entire house. Um, you know, so, so 
um, we wanted to bring back, bring forward the strongest possible design we could to you guys that respects the original house to its full integrity. And to, to achieve that, we, we had to make that compromise. Thank you, Mr. Townsend. Uh, Councillor Green, then Councillor Ney. I just have one quick question of staff through you, Mayor, to Ms. Jensen. Will these variances within the context of the Uplands Design Guidelines and, and all of that, will these variances set a precedent? Thank you. Uh, when staff are reviewing an application, we are really looking at each site on a case-by-case -case basis, so no no precedent. Thank you. Councillor Ney. Mr. Chair, but to staff, um, uh, the, the niggling point I, I'm hearing from several of the councillors is that north-facing setback. So the question, and I, I understand what the applicant's saying, it's about the context and, and whatnot. So, the question I have is, what's going on on that north neighbor's uh, setback of their um, dwelling? Uh, what I'm trying to understand is, what is the space between the property with the variant setback and how much space? Because I looked at it, it seemed quite a large, uh, much larger than a 10-foot uh, setback. So Do I, I, I don't know if the staff has the answer to that or... The applicant. I'll go to staff first, and then we can have a look at the picture. I, I like having everything, yep. the audience, and us to all have the same information if possible. So, Ms. Jensen, do you know the setback of the house adjacent? I don't know the specific number for the setback on the adjacent house. Um, for this particular site, you do have a, a narrow, fairly narrow strip through there uh, with an adjoining fence, and then there's some uh, large um, shrubbery conifer trees on the other side. Uh, you want to hold up the picture if you have that yeah, handy. You, just I don't know, John, there's a closer look, because this is an actual area with the uh, house photoshopped into it. Um, so I can bring it. Would you like this up there to look at? Uh, uh, probably everybody would like to look at Well, try it from there, and let's see what happens. Okay. So let me find it. So there's the proposed um, house. And so the neighbor's house, um, this is the contentious side variance. And you can see the neighbor's house, you know, there is a significant uh, distance between the house and um, the neighbor's house. And if you look through all the other houses, there's houses that are far closer than this. Um, what, would you, what would you estimate that to be? I, I, that might not be fair, but I'm, I, I mean, I... not fair. <laughs> yeah, it, it, let's not do that. Um, no. And I, I think it's important to point out that the setbacks are supposed to be there to protect, you know, future buildings of those houses as well, so... You don't want to make it so close that we can't uh, we can't build another house adjacent. So, um, if you give me a couple seconds, we got the we can med take a measurement on the house, and I can uh, give you pretty much a pretty good accurate. Are there any other questions here of uh, of staff or the applicant? Seeing none, I, I will I will invite other members of the audience to come forward and and speak to this. So please come forward. Welcome. And our procedure here, just to have a seat. If you just write your name, uh, just state the name on the, through the microphone for the record and your municipality of residence. Go ahead. Um, we'll come back to the answer later. Okay. Uh, good evening, councils and mayor, uh, the rest of the audience and staff. My name is Donna Thomas and I live on Bowker Avenue. And I hear the word a lot tonight, which kind of interests me, park-like setting. So this BBC is running a whole series on parks around the world. And most of them are on the birth, one of them is Bellum Palace, which Winston Churches was born on, and everybody walks through that and says, oh my God, this is a park-like setting. But it was made, man-made. Every tree on that property was man-made. Just because it was planted 200 years ago, it's still man-made. The greatest parks that we look at, Central Park. Central Park in New York was man-made. So what does park-like setting mean? It means a lot of different things. If you are talking natural park and you go up into the Souk Hills, that's not man-made. 
But when you live in a community that we live in, these are man-made and they're amazingly beautiful. And I have seen the works of another house called Ballyfin in Ireland. And this, this is 33 acres of man-made beauty that everybody goes and says, oh my God, I can't believe this is, this is natural, this is nature, this is nature at its not best. Well, they in the 1700s did, uh, built a lake that was taken out by human beings that is 20 feet deep. So, and, and, but when you look at it, it looks nature had done that. So uh, the park-like setting, I think that that word is used too often because it means so many different things to all of us. Now I'll go back to, to uh, the house in question. I lived across the street from this house for 10 years, and it is one of the prettiest houses in all of Victoria. I will say that I know the applicants, and uh, they did have a vision of building a huge brand new house, a huge one. And then one day they came back and they started talking and they said, oh, they met this guy and this guy is fabulous and he wants to keep the house and we shouldn't put into landfill, mostly we shouldn't put into landfill because of my great-grandchildren, not because of me because it's not going to bother me. But I do think about my great-grandchildren. And I found two young people who had found this creative human being here that said, we can save this house. And not only can we save it, we can make it better for today's. The heating isn't good in an old house like that. They can take the existing house and make it uh, earth-worthy in today's sense of heating, in today's sense of windows, in today's sense of all of the things that we need today. So I, I've never, m I've met you once, and but I'm thrilled that he has this vision. But more important, I'm thrilled that there's two young human beings that are sitting here that want to do this instead of knocking it down. And as far, again, as what's going to happen on that front lot, I know the family well, and I know it will be outstanding. I know that I've been a builder here in, in, in uh, 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 Oak Bay. I've been a builder in Sage. I've been a builder... Oh, a long time ago in Langford, houses now that we sold for $100,000 are selling for, you know, half a million now. So I have been here, and I see the existence of trying to do bylaws and sit within variances, but the variances were made there for things that make a difference to all of our community. To take that house down, to put it in landfill, is not going to add anything to this community. So I think uh, that's all I have to say, and, uh, but I, I want to just stress again that this will be outstanding, and uh, I think that, um, uh, again, this park-like setting that we all want, I go back to many of those park-like settings that I've been able to travel around the world, and they have been man-made, and some of the things man-made, you know, such as the aqueducts in Rome, you know, they're okay. So we don't always have to reinvent and say that what was done before was wrong. We just have to open our eyes to new visions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Anybody else wish to come forward and speak at this time? Welcome back, Mr. Armitage. Myself. Um, I'm here as before, uh, available to answer any questions that anybody may have in the context that in the time elapsed from I, the meeting, you, you may not have seen, I don't know whether you've seen the comments of the, of the panel itself. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions? I'm, this is a new offering that we've had here. I'm not sure it's the, <laughs> we usually have this a bit more formalized process. So are there any questions, Mr. Armitage? I'm not seeing any, so. Thank you. Okay. So we'll bring it back to this table then. Anybody else in the audience wish to speak? So there's a couple of options here we have for us. We can recommend or just decline it. We can 
move it forward uh, to council, uh, at which point we go to variance uh, comments from neighbors notification, um, or just, yeah, be one of those two options. Uh, I will say what I've heard around this table is a general, generally positive. I think this is a really, it's, I've heard very positive designs on this. There's not concerns about the, the variances overall outside of that, that north one and really primarily on the second story. So I think this is down at this table as to whether there's enough merit to seem to move it forward or not at this point. Councillor Ney and then Councillor well, um I'll try and kickstart this anyways. Um, so it's been very helpful listening to the comments uh, from the applicant tonight uh, for me. And uh, I, if essentially what I'm quibbling with here is a 1.45 meter setback. That's really what it comes down to because I, I it, it, in terms of everything else here that you've got in the plans, I think I understand what the concept is all about and why you've done this and the balance, the symmetry, um, uh, the architectural uh, design and how that fits with the original home and I, I can see the quality of this is um, of, a, of a very high level and uh, that the ultimate uh, project will be um, uh, tasteful and something that will have a very long lasting uh, impact. So um, what's, what's important to me is the effort that the applicants made to uh, protect well, that currently the house isn't protected. We all understand that. But the effort that the applicant is going to preserve this uh, original house and, and keep the property sympathetic with what that original house is, um, it, 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 is is quite remarkable, I think, because I, I as I've understood this, it would be much easier to take it down, and put a new um, dwelling on this on this property. And um, I, I know this community values uh, the, the heritage um, character. And, and uh, to, to me, um, I, I, I don't like that north corner. It does feel crammed if you look at it with the property line. Um, but but uh, there, there's quite a bit of space between that and the other, other dwelling, notwithstanding the comments from the mayor that those variances are in place to protect. Um, adjacent properties and whatnot, but for future building. But I, the the way the way it all comes down for me is that uh, it, it, there's a bit of a quid pro quo going on here. In my thinking, is we're going to retain and embellish the 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 existing original house um, here, and and there's a cost, and we're giving up a 1.5 meter variance uh, setback variance here. And to me, uh, that's worth it. That, that I, I think that's a reasonable quid pro quo exchange. So um, I, 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 I guess what I'm saying is I, I would support the application to go forward to council. Okay. Councilor Zelka and then Councilor Braithwaite. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, there's no motion. This is uh, comments, I presume, still. Is that true? I welcome a motion as well if anybody wants um, to make one. I'll, I'll I should I'll just clarify too. There is the, I, I should apologize, I, I was wrong. There is a third option here, and correct me if there's a fourth. Uh, we can send it back if there's something specific that we feel needs to be, or could be addressed, yes. to come back with options to the application to come back with, to work with staff. Well, I'm, I'm not ready for a, a motion for myself yet, but uh, I'm certainly looking forward to hearing uh, more comments from the other councillors. But for, for myself, I, um, using the measure map uh, in the CRD maps, um, point of information, uh, the distance uh, between the two buildings uh, at three, uh, 3,005 um, Rutlands and uh, this building is approximately 14 meters um, from edge to edge um, uh, across the property line, of course. Um, uh, um, and uh, the the fact that the building is, is uh, it, it, the sympathetic aspect of the building is being preserved um, uh, and uh, uh, an homage to the original uh, uh, design and building, uh, uh, is, is I find valuable, a value, of, of value and certainly is, it will, will, will to, to a large extent sway my vote. Um, 
I am in generally in favor of approving it uh, uh, um, uh, as is. I do worry, however, about what could potentially be done in, 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 uh, in the future. Um, while I hear the, the concerns um, maybe uh, expressed from those uh, more knowledgeable than me about heritage, um, I, would, I would much prefer to see, for example, maybe even the, the facade of the building uh, 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 preserved or, or registered of some sort, even if, even if it wasn't a particular components. Um, and I know in, in for some of our other buildings, we have uh, uh, declared certain parts of buildings uh, on, on, as a heritage, uh, heritage designated uh, or heritage um, uh, registered. So I would love to see something like that uh, uh, being part of this sort of design. Um, uh, casting ahead, um, possibly to a, to a future uh, owner, um, I could potentially see uh, this particular property um, uh, could be subject to a heritage revitalization agreement that could be part of the splitting of it back into two and then and at that point maybe with uh, some aspects of heritage could could ad could adjust or or um, uh, wrestle some adjustments out of us as a way of trying to preserve this building uh, for uh, for the ages um, uh, so j just uh, uh, that would be one of my worries in terms of what could be done in the future looking casting ahead a hundred years which is what we're trying to do here um, uh, but on the other hand, I do see what you're trying to do. So in general, I would be in favor of, uh, of moving forward with this. If it went back to staff, I'm not quite sure what we'd be asking them to do. Um, uh, they, they, they're, at least through the current house uh, to the north, uh, there appears to be enough distance for now. Of course, we're, uh, that house is not part of this propon uh, proposal. Um, um, so that's not particularly relevant, but I do see at this moment there's at least some distance. Um, and we're dealing with an existing uh, um, uh, variant. So. Uh, that's why I can justify it and, and move forward with approval. Councilor Braithwaite. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I normally do not approve anything that has uh, variances, um, especially uh, if there's uh, an opportunity to um, have a kind of a blank slate and, and go from there. So I, I'm really struggling with this one in that um, I really like what you're proposing for for the space, other than as Councillor Ney has mentioned, um, that north side. Um, but um, I have to agree with a lot of Councillor Ney's um, comments. I truly appreciate the fact that you're not ripping this house down and, and putting it into a landfill. That to me um, is, that weighs a lot on one side um, for me to make a decision for something like that. I also appreciate the fact that it's two lots put together, which to me, um, you're right, there's no other that I can think of, no other properties in Uplands that have chosen to do that, um, where they've put two properties together and not build on one property. Uh, so that to me is another bonus. Um, so I... I am really leaning towards um, moving this forward. I would be very interested to see what the neighbors would, would say about this. Um, so i um, be interested to hear what the rest of the councillors say about it as well. But right now, I'm, I'm quite leaning towards moving it forward. Um, I actually need a motion for, <laughs> to, for someone to move forward, uh, then we can move forward with it. Uh, so I'll, I'll make the motion that um, we direct staff to um, Whatever it is, put the motion one. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a motion to, yeah, to move it to council. To move it to council, yeah. Second. Uh, and in our process on DVPs, this would go to uh, notification directly. Uh, so it would have a minimum two week notification period to come back to a future council meeting for consideration based on community feedback. Councillor Zelka? Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, in support of the motion, I do have a question through you to, to, to staff, if I may. Um, with respect to uh, a, a possible swimming pool uh, in the uh, in the beach side, I understand our fences and trees bylaw says that there must be a fence around every swimming pool, no less than four feet in height. Uh, even if there was some super duper magical cover on this uh, swimming pool, I presume we would still have to have a fence around the swimming pool. Ms. Jensen, that is correct. It doesn't necessarily have to be immediately around the swimming pool. It could be at the property lines. Yes. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Green. Thank you, and I appreciate <clears throat> all of the comments of my colleagues and the mayor. Um, I feel a bit, um, sometimes it's lonely to take the counterpoint position, and, but I'm going to have to do that tonight. First of all, I appreciate everything that um, this applicant is trying to do and that you are trying to do, Mr. Townsend, but the fact is there will be demolition. The fact is that the house will be a facade on the front, but the whole back will be gone, correct? 
Is that right? Um, because the back is completely redesigned. I was there today. Yeah, the back will be um, <clears throat> redesigned. Um, but part of the one thing you have to take in consideration is the lot ha now has two fronts. The house wasn't originally right. designed with two fronts. But people are talking about demolition, but there will be a level of demolition of the original home, correct? Correct. Right. And so that, that's one point. The other point is um, that when a developer talks about their vision and, and they talk about what they would like to do, and in this case, it is visionary. I agree with other council members' comments. But when you say, if this application fails, the outcome will be demolition, that's a really tough thing to say to a council that is trying to find a balance between preserving what has we have been told is valued by the community, but also trying to please the applicant. And this is the struggle. This is the constant struggle for any council on a land use decision this major, on every land use decision. It isn't an easy decision. And it's not being on one side or the other or being against or for. It's trying to find common ground, no pun intended, between, you know, between what, what the owner or applicant wants and between what the community values. So it, it's a tough place to be. I don't envy you. Um, and it's hard to make a decision sometimes, but I have to err on the side of the community tonight. And that is that if there is another option, if there is another way, um, that would be amazing. Uh, if we could you know, move, move the vision over, w it would be tremendous and, and preserve the house that's there. Yes, it's not totally original, but it isn't just a facade either. Um, it was added on uh, over the years. So I'm going to honor the, um, the recommendation from staff. I will not support the application. Thank you. Councilor Braithwaite? Uh, just, to, just to follow up on that, I think that from, from my perspective, I, I understand what you're saying, but from my perspective, I want the community to be able to have input. And so to get that input, I think if we move it to the next step and get the input from the community, if the community comes back and says exactly what you're saying, we want this, 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 then that's our opportunity again to kind of go back to the, to the applicant and say, okay, we got it this far, here's what we've heard, now you have to go back and make changes. A and I think that that's, to me, that's the next step in the process. And so I, uh, that's the reason that I would move it forward because I totally understand where you're coming from, but I want to hear from the community and what they have to say about it. Councilor Patterson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, good comments from, from the council table and, and there, there, there's a lot of thought that goes into this because, of course, uh, the community does support heritage, and your intent was really, I think, um, to also do that and to honor the the building that was there. I I like Councillor Green. I'm not able to support the application as I see it because I do believe that I would like to see a more informed decision, knowing what would happen on the other lot. Um, and while it's, it's really admirable to be able to retain so much of the character of the original home, and, and I think you have imp you've improved on that design. I, you know, and I, I, I don't hesitate to say that. I, th I think it's a very gracious home. But at the same time, as a community, we are losing the opportunity of another lot that would ha have a, a house on it that will now have a swimming pool on it. And so my struggle, my struggle with that is that our, our community plan um, is also about having living spaces for people. So I don't doubt that it would all be done very well, although I haven't seen the design for it yet. So I would, I would like to see the full design for the lot uh, to feel that you know, I, ha I, I really understand how we're going forward in the future of this because we are, and as, as Mayor Murdoch said too, we, you know, we think in terms of the future, we do have to, uh, you know, I, it's wonderful that the applicants do not require a garage and I admire them for, for um, housing cars outdoors because I don't like building buildings for cars, but times change um, and future owners may want that. So. All of these things that you know, we just we have to think about to see what we will 
what is acceptable and, and, and what we feel that we need to keep as a position for the future because homes do change hands, lands change hands, and eventually perhaps somebody won't even want the swimming pool and it will become a different type of usage. So those are the things w we face and it would really be, I think in my mind, good to know the total programming for the lot um, so that I can really weigh what, what, we, what we are gaining as a community and what we're conceding. Thank so you. Mr. Townsend, I apologize. At this point, we're just kind of having a conversation, so I saw your hand go up there, but this is kind of the, I know, I know it's hard at this point. Uh, if there's another question of the applicant, people are welcome to ask that, but at this point, we're just in, in the, we have a motion on the table. Uh, we're considering Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I will not support the motion. Um, quite simply, I'm, I'm appreciative of the amount of time and effort that's been put into the design here, and that's exactly the reason why, um, uh, to use the, the term, I'm adhering to the rigid box. Um, I, I do expect that applications of this scope and scale uh, adhere to the guidelines, and I do concur with the guidance of staff, and I think it's pretty well summed up in exactly the uh, the statement that was referenced earlier, uh, basically saying that you know the the historical scale of the original home, one of the first homes constructed in the uplands, becomes lost in the overall scale of the proposed addition to the home. I concur with that statement, and quite simply, I won't support it at this stage. Thank you. Um, get down to me, I guess here. I'm not sure where everybody's going to be sitting on this one. I, I will say I, um, I this has 98% merit to me. I think all of the relaxations on the variances are 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 fine in terms of the height. Uh, you are I, I, the comments that, that the original house is lost in this design is true. Uh, that's why I said it could never qualify as a heritage home. It's it's keeping the original design but expanding that to a to a much larger house and into a, a more Original style, but but a modern house as part of that. Um, you know, I if I I'm, I'm actually on the fence on this one a little bit because I think it's worth getting some feedback from the community. However, I also think there's two things that I would like to see rather than going through this iteration twice and having it go out and come back a month later and then go back and come back a month later. Uh, if there's feedback, uh, I would like us to, to see have a look at what what options there are in terms of allowing for that that second story uh, set like. It has to bring us sort of what that design, you said you played around, the applicant spoke to, to playing around with designs on that front. Uh, it does that work. Can it work within that design context and within the, the overall arching piece of it? I'm um, getting a head shake, so I, the answer is probably no on that one from the designer's perspective. But at the end of the day, we have to approve siting and design, so it's really a, at the end of the day for this table. Um, and the second part of that is just, I think, that, that's, that's the only thing that would hold me back, frankly. I would like to see from an engineering perspective if there was possible to design structurally a way that a future garage could be put in. Um, I think that's doable. I don't think that's, that's part of this discussion. I think that's more of an ask from a longevity perspective. Um, so any other comments at this point before we call the question? So the motion on the table is to move it to council, uh, really out to the, to the community for feedback and then back to council at a future council meeting in a sense approving the design as it sits right now uh, subject to that that feedback council yeah, Navy, I, you, have I, a? you know i i'm going to vote in favor of this to to move it forward but um i like councillor Braithwaite. i think that's a, a fair comment is we move it forward and get the feedback from the community because we are here acting on behalf of the community i'd like to hear more voices about what their perspective of this is and and that's the way to do that so i'll be voting in favor uh, so with that, I'll, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? All right. I'll cast the deciding vote in favor. I think we'll, we'll move it forward to the, to the next council meeting and solicit feedback from the community. So thank you very much. Uh, I think you heard there's a little tentativeness on this front. So if I have any advice, is perhaps go and, and think a little bit about if there's anything else that you might want to do to kind of make it uh, more appealing to address some of the issues, concerns raised here. And I really want to appreciate, express my appreciation to council or committee here for their thoughtful th comments on these so thank you very much to the applicant for bringing it forward thank you that took a lot longer than I was hoping though so let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to the to the next item on the agenda uh, we have a DVP application for 787 transit road uh, Ms. Jensen would you care to uh, give a quick update here we have to get through this one before my iPad dies 
this is a home that's located on the east side of Transit Road, which is just north of Central Avenue. Uh, there is a building permit has been issued for a new single family home, which is currently under construction. The building plans for the main roof of the home include a series of three roof vents along the front of the home, and the owner would like to replace those vents with dormer windows. To complete the works requires a variance to building height, and the owner is requesting a variance of 0.82 meters, or three feet, in order to install these windows. The works do not change the building footprint of the home nor the overall height. There is no change to the main roof or to the dormer structure itself. It is a replacement of the louvered vents with dormer windows only. Staff have also reviewed the application and consider the proposal to be supportable. There is no significant impact to the streetscape along Transit Road or to the adjacent neighbors. The dormer windows will essentially act as skylights, allowing additional light into the home. Uh, staff are seeking council direction. Thank you. I just gave you my, my portable battery there so you can plug in your iPad. <laughs> Thanks, Councillor Nee. Um, thank you very much for that summary. Is the applicant here? All right, we'll call you forward if we need, if you have any questions. Are there questions of the applicant or staff? I need, I need somebody to say something. I I'll can't move, move approval I'll of move the approval. staff recommendation. Yeah, I move approval. Okay, we have a mover and a seconder to approve the design as, as laid here. Uh, no, no, I have to go uh, to the, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak to this? This is, again, 787 Transit Road. Seeing none, I'll call the, back to this table. Uh, Councillor Green. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> the only thing I'm aware of, and I, I would ask through through you, Mayor, to staff, height was a concern um, among some of the neighbors on transit. I just wondered if if that had was that something you were aware of, or have you heard anything about about height? Ms. Jensen. We have no had no inquiries with respect to this application to this point in time, so I'm not aware of any concerns. Thank you. Um, and just again, for the interest of all parties here, the process here would be as a as a variance piece. It will come uh, out to notification to neighbors for feedback and come back to this table at a future council meeting. Um, that would be the process going forward. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. That was much shorter than the previous one. <laughs> Uh, and the last item on our agenda is the Seelor Sculpture Location discussion. Uh, Mr. Jones, you've written up a nice report here for us, for consideration. Would I care to give a quick overview? Sure, Your Worship. I'll uh, try to do this quickly. So Council is aware that uh, we had a, a very generous offer in the community for, uh, from someone who uh, wished to um, have a sculpture put uh, in place for the benefit of uh, residents and visitors to uh, the community. And of course, we're very grateful for that. One of the uh, preferred locations was on a rock in Oak Bay. And uh, since that announcement, uh, we've seen a fair amount of feedback at the district. And uh, give or take 50 letters, uh, probably 80% saying we don't like that location. 20% uh, saying uh, we like that location. And I want to be really clear, the, the feedback that we received really has not been about the art. It has been around the location and people preferring that uh, that rock be maintained in its natural state. So uh, last week I had an opportunity to meet with uh, the Arts Laureate and uh, we uh, agreed that uh, in our report that we are bringing forward to you tonight uh, that we would suggest that we look for another location and uh, that we invite the Parks, Recreation and Culture Commission to uh, work with uh, the Public Art Committee to uh, look uh, in the future around our process for uh, locating art and uh, our location parameters uh, for art. And uh, the one thing that uh, is uh, in the report is a suggestion that uh, in the future uh, all public art be located on uh, property owned or under the control uh, of the district. So that's before you and uh, be happy to respond to any questions. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And I would just like to reiterate our appreciation. This is an incredibly generous offer. And I don't want to be seen to be in any way looking at this in a negative light. It's a very positive thing for us to be uh, coming to us. So, and, and I also think it's important for us not to bring 
approval of artwork itself to this table. I don't think this is the appropriate place uh, for that. Uh, and I do appreciate this discussion around the location aspect of it. Um, and I just, um, a little bit of history here as well. This has been before committee once before, uh, and at that time it was brought uh, with understanding that the, the very lengthy provincial timelines for approvals uh, for anything on the shoreline, and the, and the council did a, agree to move it forward, not unanimously, um, to that process, but largely in the interest of just seeing if it was even possible at that point not to make a final decision. So this is much closer to fruition at this point, and so it's back here at this table for some, some consideration. Um, I'll put it to council if they have any questions or comments or motions, I guess, at this point. Um, I, I just wanted to um, thank you, through you, Chair. I just wanted to mention that um, Ms. Um, Ms. Adams couldn't be here tonight um, for, as part of the conversation, but in her stead, she has um, asked uh, Ms. Lorte, who is in the audience, um, that if there are any questions in regards to anything that uh, have to do with the, with the program that um, she could answer. So. Thank you. And we have a very detailed letter as well from, from Ms. Adams that articulated the history in there and the process underway for this. Um, are there any questions from council? So I would like to make a motion uh, that we follow option one um, as per the staff report that the staff work with the Arts Laureate to identify potential locations for the Sealor sculpture and the and part in there as well. Second. So adding it to the municipal or municipal controlled lands. Okay. Uh, we don't we have a mover and a seconder, which is fine. Normally we go to a, a discussion before we go to a motion, but this is fine. We have, we're going to be discussing the motion in any case. I don't see any other. We do. We do. Uh, is, 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 I'm going to go with questions from council at this point, and if I don't see any, I'll just go to the, the community, and then I'll come back to this table for, for discussion and vote. Uh, is there anybody from the audience who wishes to speak to this issue at this time? Yes, please come forward. My name is Sharman Minus, and I live in Oak Bay. Thank you, and welcome, Ms. Minus. We do have your correspondence in our records. Yes, Sarah, my vast thank you. correspondence. This really struck a chord with me. Um, I'm thankful that it's been decided that this sculpture will not be situated on the rock that's technically under the, the governance of the province. Very, very thankful. But um, to make a pun, we're still not out of the water yet. Now, uh, Mr. Jones said that... Um, he said that in all the correspondence, it was not about the art. I took it upon myself to analyze the correspondence. Um, where people said, actually stated whether they liked or disliked the project, within the correspondence, twice as many people disliked it as liked it. I then went to the Facebook local site where there has been huge discussions on it, and I went to a, an original thread that um, was over 300 responses long, and I did the same thing. Um, most people are uncomfortable talking about art, perhaps they don't feel qualified, or a lot of people thought that it was a done deal, the statue was already made, etc., etc. So that didn't come up. The thing that hit people most was they didn't want anything on the rock, and that's what they talked about. You cannot infer from that that they don't have an opinion about the art. Again, over 300 responses on Facebook Local on just one thread, and I think there were at least four threads, and I zipped through them. And again, twice as many people that actually mentioned whether they liked or disliked the art, twice as many people disliked it as liked it. I showed it to approximately 30 people. Not all of them were my friends. I got to the point where I was stopping people in the village or just chatting people up that were sitting next to me having coffee. And every single person that I showed the photo of the Marquette to, their reaction was generally a jaw drop and you must be kidding. Now, um, the other thing is, now you're probably going to consider about putting it somewhere else, and I have huge problems with that. The donor was very generous. The donor is being very generous. It's a wonderful, wonderful offer. But this is something that I understand probably hasn't happened before, and it's like we haven't got our policies in place. It's, it's come out of the, uh, as a bolt out of the blue, and we're ever so grateful, and we're slavering at it, but we haven't really thought it out to the very, very end. Um, the donor chose the rock. He ha was big on choosing the art, the type of art. He wanted it whimsical, which has turned out to be twee, Disney-esque, and kitsch, uh, three words that were repeated and repeated to me whenever I showed the picture. 
So he's chosen all that, and it's going to be in a public place, and the 18,000 residents of Oak Bay will have to put up with it, whether they like it or not. And it's a memorial, in a way, to him. I mean, when I die, I could leave you $500,000, and you could put a nice, big, oversized sculpture of my dog that I adored right up in the middle of some a public park because I want you to do that and you're overawed because I've left you all this money. We haven't we haven't got there yet with with the policy and I understand that's something you're going to look at. But I think we need to draw back a little bit and just look at everything the overall concept of um, having the arts committee choose this art in a way they they pre-curate the art that we get to look at. And if you have a group of people and I believe it's Barbara Adams and six other people and you have a group of people who've done it for the past four years and are now into their fifth year. We are getting the art that they like, um, and there there must be there must be other ways of of choosing choosing pieces. Um, the other thing I, I I'd like to say a few things is that it, if we accept that the donor only wants to do this and nothing else, it's a precedent. It's lovely to get the money, but it's a. Pr they al it also has to fit in with what the public wants, what, what Oak Bay wants, how they want to be perceived, um, no matter how much money it is. It's not just you know his decision to have um, that particular piece. And there have been letters, as you know, and then the piece has a lot of problems, just ap apart from the fact whether you like it or not. Colonialism, First Nations, and sexuality, apparent demeaning of women. Those are the things that were mentioned. I won't go into detail. You can read the letters. And I'm sure you have. Um, some people brought up an idea when I discussed with them, when I stopped them in the street, that why not have a dedicated space for art in Oak Bay that revolves? There's a revolving thing, as we have now, where you vote on your favorite piece. And um, if pieces are donated, perhaps it goes there. Uh, someone I spoke to said, why not have a huge, you know, not just a park space where it's always sculptures, and the sculptures are always a certain size because they have to be... Um, under worth under ten thousand dollars, so you know what can you do with that? Why not have something that's indoors, and you could have all sorts of art, and also run art classes or something like that. Um, so that's a thought. Um, I mean, you know, a municipal gallery, in other words. Uh, I also take issue with the public art committee. Um, I have looked all over the internet, and maybe I haven't looked in the right places, but I don't know the names of everybody in that committee. The other committees that work with council that are entitled to receive funds from the municipality, um, you know, the Heritage Commission, the ADP, I can find their names, I can find when they meet, I can go to those meetings, even though I may not speak. But I don't find that I can do this, uh, at least I haven't found it on the internet, and please correct me if I'm wrong. But considering it's public art, and I'm a member of the public, I feel that is my right. Even if I may not speak at their meetings, I should at least like to know in advance what's going on before a report is written that's given to um, Parks, Rec, and Culture. Um, let me see. The other thing is um, the competition, where we have the small arts of work all up and down Oak Bay Avenue and other places, and it seems to be expanding. More and more pads are being put down. I don't like that. Uh, I think that, that that should be controlled somehow because should council always feel that they have to buy the winning piece? I don't know if you feel that you, you must every time it wins, but in, in that case, in the past four years, we've added eight to ten pieces. Um, if we go at two a year for the next few years, we, uh, you know, it, we need to step back and look at the whole picture. Where, where, What's going on with this? Do we need to step back for two or three years and let the money accumulate? And maybe we can have a, a bigger or more, I don't know, more complex works of art that's worth, instead of under 10, it's worth 30 or something like that. Um, I think of the artists themselves when they have to have that work installed that, uh, for a whole year, and the competition, it's voted on in September, October, whatever, and then it still has to sit there for another six months. When they could have, could have marketed it, they could have sold it to someone. Um, I don't think it should be up there all year, all the time. So, um, as I say, is it time to s take a step back and look at everything we're doing and look at the future with a, a little more, I don't know, 
a little more finesse. How are we going to finesse the future, in other words? And, you know, not be dazzled just because a donor has come forward. Um, and to, to have a plan, to have a general plan, so we just don't clutter up Oak Bay um, with works of art. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Minus. You raise a lot of points that we're not talking about tonight, but they're, uh, but they're good points to raise up here. I, I think it's important to recognize that that jury process is not just the committee, but they went out to other bodies to, to provide that feedback. Sure. Councillor Briefly. Just, just a, a couple of things, Ms. Minus. Um, I think that you'll find that this year there's less pieces of art um, going out than there were in previous years. I think we're down to 10 pieces of art rather than 12. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is is that as far as um, the winning piece goes, uh, the, what the committee is going to be doing is it, it will actually take the top three pieces that are, that are voted on, not the actual number one piece, um, and then they'll make a decision throughout the committee um, on that piece. And it's, I think in the very first year, if I'm correct, um, the piece that was uh, chosen to be purchased, we didn't have enough money, so we had to wait a little while until we had more money in there. So your idea of not buying a piece per year actually goes in line with what, depending on which piece is, is chosen um, by the committee to purchase. So, so that might be a little bit of information for you. Thank you. Curtis Hobson, Oak Bay. Welcome, um, Mr. Hobson. I agree with everything Ms. Minus said, um, particularly for this sculpture. Through the lens of colonialism, it's a big fail through the lens of feminism, it's a bigger fail, and through the uh, lens of uh, First Nations and Aboriginal uh, reconciliation, it's also a big fail. Um, how it got to the point it got to, um, I think Ms. Minus addressed some of the flaws in the process. Um, there's been a lot of time, energy, and typing. Uh, if I'm, I know a lot of you are members of Oak Bay Local, so uh, if you've read through what's gone on there, um, respectfully to Mr. Jones, most of it was about the rock, but not all of it. Um, I really uh, think when the commissions and committees are reviewed that also the, the Public Arts Acquisition Committee, whatever it's called, that needs to be on that list of reviews. Thanks. Thank you very much. Please come forward. And I, I should just, out of courtesy, uh, the the final artwork piece, again, this is one of the reasons it's hard to have it. We're not talking about the art specifically tonight. Uh, it goes through an iterative process. It's gone through a couple of changes. It's going through more changes right now. Uh, the final version that comes forward will be a little different than I think what's been circulating online. Uh, so that's another reason that it's difficult when we're having these kind of conversations to, to get that far into the artwork itself. Welcome. Yeah, just push the button in the front there, and there you go. Uh, Pam Woodland. I live in Oak Bay. Welcome, Miss um, Woodland. Thank you very much, Sharon, for bringing that breakdown of uh, reactions to the art piece because, in fact, you will have all read the letters and the Oak Bay thread, and you know that the content is highly controversial. And um, what other people have said, I pretty much agree with. Understanding, as you say, that it is under review. And I guess in particular, if it's going to be relocated, it no longer is really as significant to have a piece that evokes other shoreline art. So I can imagine a rethink around that. Um, one of the big takeaways for me with all of this was <sighs> people cared about the environment. What people were talking about when they were saying they want the rock protected is that they could see that scrappy little beach with all those boats the oil slicks and the gas slicks with the water that comes through the outflow that sometimes stinks. 
they could see through that to the life that lives there. And that was terrific. I really felt encouraged about the nature of core values in Oak Bay grounded in something that is intrinsic, intrinsically beautiful, intrinsically, <coughs> excuse me, valuable. So I feel that <coughs> what people were, in a sense, you know, there was the, are you for or against the sculpture? They were for the bay. They were for the wildlife uh, migratory bird sanctuary. It has been a highly disrespected stretch of our landscape that I think people are becoming increasingly aware of. I love it that kids are now standing up and telling us what's important. I hope they don't have to be the ones who tell us, preserve the bay, clean the water, clean the boats, get that, the gas, the oil, look at what's in front of us, the naturehood. I love that term that's being now introduced into our communities where you step out your door, you look at what's in front of you, and you value it. It's wonderful stuff. And I think that <laughs> this process has really helped open a lot of eyes to those intrinsic values. And I hope that it can be backed up through Council's renewed determination to value those things, to see how important it is to the community, and see where we go forward from there. I'd really like to see a lot of focus being drawn on uh, the bird sanctuary in particular. I was very happy to hear you all talk about restricting dog activity in certain areas, Cattle Point, those guys work like such buggers, and yet there's still no boardwalk to help protect the endangered species that are going there. That presentation that Wiley gave, you definitely have to see it. He's, it's, but he's very modest. He doesn't like to say, he's very careful about, well, I guess lots of things. One of them might be his job, but uh, you can't talk about dogs easily here. Uh, but there are, as he's, he was so kind, he said, you know, like people are doing all of these reckless things. And he says, yes, but they don't know. They just don't know. Ms. Whittlen, I, I'm just in the interest of time trying to keep it on the topic at hand. Here. I know yes. this is all very oh, important yeah, stuff. Right. but this Absolutely. <laughs> but this is where it spun for me, was in recognizing that there is this entire world out there that we need to protect the rock was a symbol for it. It was a galvanizing force for the energies. Sorry to go off topic, but uh, thank you for listening. And thanks to the donor. Uh, but yeah, money doesn't always win. <laughs> thanks, Ms. Whittlin. Uh, is there anybody else who wishes to come forward to speak at this time? Seeing none, back to this table. We have a motion in front of us. Any discussion? Councillor Appleton. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I definitely uh, in support of the of the motion as made, I, and I think uh, there's been lots of comments made to the in, you know potential environmental impact and people valuing the natural natural environmental aspects of the specific location as well. I, and I think in in some of the correspondence, uh, the topic, and I strongly agree that uh, in some of the correspondence really relates to our decision making around indigenous people and about first nations people i mean obviously we acknowledge that the land that we have stewardship over as a district and as a municipality uh, is on traditional lands of of first nations peoples and we acknowledge that every meeting uh, but when we consider areas that are outside of our jurisdiction and sort of it, our endorsement or tacit or otherwise of activities that happen outside of our jurisdiction in the waters that surround our district, which also are, you know, very obviously part of those traditional territories and closely associated with First Nations as well. I think that we're making a statement here to say that we acknowledge those territories even in areas that are not directly under our jurisdiction and that we need to 
uh, consider uh, Indigenous issues and consider First Nations uh, 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 in, in the decisions that we make or that we choose not to make, uh, and also concur with, with your statement, Mr. Mayor, uh, in terms of it being a difficult situation for council to be in to make decisions about art. Uh, so I, I don't want us to enter into that discussion either, uh, but I'm, I'm very satisfied with the, the recommendation as proposed. Thank you. Anything else? Almost got through that. Councillor Zalka. <laughs> I can't let this one go. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll, I, I speak in favor of the motion. Um, I think it's very important for us to um, uh, um, further the, the work of, um, of, of setting some policy in this area. And uh, I, I love the work that the Public Art Committee is doing, the Arts Alive program that's bringing um, um, you know, uh, 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 some lovely points of contention. Uh, into the community, it, it's uh, it's getting people to think. It's getting people to uh, discuss and 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 explore ideas that are hard to discuss sometimes. And um, yeah, here we are now discussing colonialism and discussing gender and discussing stuff in, in, in very meaningful ways. Uh, and, uh, and many, oh gosh, maybe that's the purpose of art. So um, what I wanted to, um, oh, I just lost my, let me log back in here. I wanted to uh, propose uh, an amendment to this motion, please. Uh, 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 as as uh, as I've been educated by some of the folks who have come to the to the to the um, to the microphone, I wanted to propose um, at the end of this uh, uh, um, motion uh, a comma be placed, and the following be added. Uh, with respect to uh, okay, so the, it currently reads establishing additional processes and process and locating the guidelines for public art in Oak Bay, comma including a process to rotate the locations of district-owned public art and a process to remove from public view district-owned public art. That's the extent of the, of, of the uh, amendment I'd be proposing. Essentially, uh, I, 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 this, uh, the, may I motivate? Um, well, or we need a second. seconder before you motivate. Is there a seconder? Maybe just read that motion aloud again. The motion would be to um, to uh, uh, further uh, what additional processes mean. What I'd like to add to, to suggest that what that means is including a process to rotate the locations of district-owned public art and a process to remove from public view district-owned public art. I think there's, I just want to, yeah, so uh, Ms. Lorty, I think is going to touch on this, but I, Mr. Jones, maybe you may know the answer to this, and if not, I'll go to Ms. Lorty about, so I'm just going to say, I think there is a, uh, <laughs> I think I hear what you're saying, but I, I believe there is, in, in terms of, there is a, not a process, but there is a recognition of the need to, to, to take public art away at times and, and replace it with, with new art. Your Worship, you're absolutely correct. And part of the process that's being suggested is that there would we would look at the policy that we have in place, and uh, the uh, the Public Art Committee would work with Council, or sorry, with the uh, uh, Parks, Recreation, and Culture Commission to uh, see how it may want to uh, change, amend, alter, add to, delete uh, from that policy. So, just. For my clarification, there is established additional process and locating guidelines for public art. I think what we can do here is take that feedback that you're giving uh, as feedback under the current wording and and allow them to come back with those changes of processes. Is probably that given that the to mediation is uh, to a comment. Uh, and I'm also um, intrigued to hear that there are some processes uh, that the arts committee, uh, public art committee, is actually following. I would love to see them at some point. So, Ms. Lorty, I think you have handy the, the one about removing, yes. taking art o out of yes, circulation. Uh, Your Worship, I'm just I am referring to the um, public art policy, a really wonderful 30-page document that we prepared two, two or three years ago. And in that, in that there is rec uh, reference to the objectives of the public art advisory uh, council. It's advisory, unlike the word that was used earlier, which I think was acquisition. But the operative... Uh, the sentence is advise and consult on specific issues such as provo proposed gifts, donations, deacquisitions, deaccessions rather, deaccessions and loans of artwork to the municipal collection. So I think the idea of removal is included in uh, deaccession, perhaps. 
if, if, if um, so, um, uh, uh, as as a furtherance of my of, of the comment, it sounds like uh, uh, those sorts of um, of changes would would originate from the public arts committee. Uh, uh, what I was hoping for was is similar to what I've heard um, uh, said by the public and by others, is that there would be other avenues or, or venues or, or opportunities to provide an input. And I'm not quite sure how we work with the public art committee. I'm, I've only been a councillor for five years, and I was unaware of this document. So, uh, and I was also alternate on the Parks and Rec committee, and I was unaware of this document. So, um, uh, I'm, I'm maybe it's on the website, and I just haven't found it. But uh, so, I, um, with respect to the comments about this, um, it would be helpful, I think, if the public knew what the process was on how to do these sorts of things. Thank so, you. what we have a motion to amend. So, I just I, if there's, I'll look for a seconder. And then we can talk to it. Okay, so we don't have a seconder. So I think that uh, what I will take though is is some comments. I think I think we captured them, but the 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 concerns about the DS session and the and possibility of rotation and locations and it's been raised here already in in a number of conversations about about at some point approaching the limits and the number of and the number of locations and the and the uh, and those actual locations as they as they will finalize over time. So I don't think we need to deal with that all today, but it's good to capture it in terms of the comments. Okay. Any other things? Okay. I will we'll then call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? None opposed. Thank you very much. So that passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones, for that. Yeah, um, Councillor Zelka. Uh, a point of uh, information: uh, Will th will this information be available on the website or through some process? Uh, uh, currently, the, the the Parks, Rec, and Culture Committee do, does not put their reports up on the website in a, in a convenient way, uh, and and maybe that's how I missed this. Um, um, is there any uh, a plan or, or or is there any idea or way that this will potentially be rectified where the public will have access to these sort of documents? So at this point, the motion is to refer it to the Parks, Rec, and Culture to work with the Public Arts Committee to come back with some, some ideas and suggestions around this process. Um, I don't, I believe that report would come back to council when it's complete, is that correct, Mr. Jones? That's correct, Your Worship. Okay, so that that report will come back to us. In terms of the public art policy document, I don't know where that is. It is on the website. I'm getting confirmation it's on the website, so. Google, Google's your friend. Google. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we need a motion to adjourn to I'll in camera. I'll move that in accordance with Section 91B of the Community Charter that the open portion of the meeting of Council be adjourned and that a closed session be convened to discuss personal information about an identifiable individual who is being considered for a municipal award or honour or who has provided, offered to provide a gift to the municipality or on condition of anonymity. Second. Move and second. All those in favour? Opposed? Unopposed? We'll go into the committee. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight.